the best way to get flexible lift weights that's right getting stronger gives you real world flexibility now i'm not just talking about passive range of motion that's nice you can do the splits great but do you have strength with that new range of motion functional flexibility is what counts otherwise you're like a toddler great you could sit in weird positions but you put load on your back and you get hurt so you want functional flexibility the kind that prevents injury lift weights with a full range of motion it's the best way to get that don't get funked up. i don't think this is um this pisses people off by the way get functional sense. yeah i also don't think that it's still common knowledge i think that's it's still uh i still think most people think that lifting heavy weights is what makes you tight and uh not flexible yes so yeah. Uh, this I, and be honest, this is not something that I I fully understood even as a young trainer when I first started training, because you feel soreness and tightness in the muscle, and if you ever mm -hmm. lifted chest heavy or legs heavy, the next day you try and move, you do you feel stiff. So you think, oh, okay, well, lifting weights is not the best thing for flexibility. Well, the key is doing it right, right? Because you can make yourself tighter if you lift wrong. Like if you always train in the same planes of movement, okay? You can get really strong in particular exercises, but then because you're weak outside of that, let's say laterally or rotationally, then your body tightens you up because you have all the strength going in one direction. It'll tighten you up so that it doesn't allow you to move outside of that because all that power can then hurt you. So it can make you tight if you do it wrong. The key here is to train with a variety of movements, train in all different planes of movement, and to train with the full range of motion. Then what happens is you get strong with that new range of motion. Otherwise, it's like that example I gave. Like I have a I have a, a seven month old daughter. She's flexible as hell. I mean, she could put her toes in her mouth, and I could bend her all over the place. But she's unstable. That's not flexibility. That's actually a recipe for injury. Uh, and trainers who've worked with lots of people have encountered this occasionally, where you have that hyper flexible, weak <clears throat> client, yeah. and those people hurt themselves. It's instability. So. Long static stretching, what that does, that increases range of motion, but it doesn't give you functional flexibility. In the real world, it's all about functional flexibility. It's not about range of motion. Well, I know this was an evolution for all of us. I'm, I definitely was for me in terms of like stretching my clients out and uh, trying to get them to achieve like certain new ranges of motion. And so a lot of times would intervene and would help kind of uh, be that sort of external force to help kind of pull their arm back, like, and get it to go a little bit further back uh, passively, but they could never hold and sustain it or try to do that on their own. And then, you know, once I figured out that like adding muscle tension, right? So if I'm doing this now and I'm squeezing my muscles and pulling and trying actively to get in that position, now you can move that. You can go yeah. further. And also you have access to um, be able to actually lift weights or, or do something functionally in that range of motion. Well, do you think what also contributes to the stigma around lifting weights, making you sh tighter and less of a range of motion has to do too with after you train a muscle, especially in an exercise you haven't done in a long time, the soreness is, is typically in the origin or insertion of the muscles where you feel most. And so you tend to like when you're sore from when the next, sore, sure. you don't want to move to that range of motion. Cause it's mm -hmm. like, uh, you know, you just, you just trained it hard. And so because you're sore and the soreness is normally at the end ranges of motion mm -hmm. that it feels like, Oh, that's shortening my range of motion up, but it's just cause so you're, that's what you're signaling to your body. Well, now. look, yeah. think of it this way. Think of, a. Uh, I don't want to uh, go for, I'm going to use an analogy to see if this works. So like imagine, um, and a, a super powerful uh, train on rails, okay? The, the more powerful and fast that train goes, the, 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 the less sharp turns can be because any sharper and it can go right off the rails because it requires tremendous amount of, of, of stability to support that speed. So you can't take super sharp turns because of that momentum. Okay, so if you train with short ranges of motion like bodybuilders do, you do the same exercises, you don't rotate, you don't train laterally, you don't train all the different planes of motion, your body will actually tighten up to limit where you can access that power because you're so strong pressing forward, but you've got no strength with stabilizing your, let's say, internal and external rotation. Well, now, yeah, you do get, you, you can find yourself getting a little tighter. Um, that's why this is so important that you do it right. But if you train right and do it properly and train all those planes of movement and train in full ranges of motion, what happens is you... You develop strength and stability in all of these. Now you have real functionality. And again, I'll, I'll go back to this. Like you could be hyper flexible, but if you don't have strength, you're screwed. You're going to dislocate joints. You're going to injure yourself. Mm -hmm. uh, you're going to get hurt um, because injury happens 
Uh, not because, I mean, yes, freak things can happen, but typically injuries happen because you don't have the strength to support yourself in a range of motion that just happened. Like you, you step off a curb or you reach to grab something. Mm -hmm. Maybe you moved faster than your stability allowed you to stabilize, or you lifted something in a position where you didn't have the strength and stability to support. Boom. You end up hurting yourself. That's yeah. how injuries happen. I mean, the analogy you're giving with the train is the, the example that we probably saw a lot as, as trainers, which was the strength training athlete or the bodybuilder guy who, you know, decided to go throw a baseball yeah. or, or throw a Frisbee, you know, for mm -hmm. the first time in years and, you know, tore, rip, felt like they ripped their shoulder off. It, it's, it wasn't, it was because they're so strong in a, in a specific plane of motion yeah. that the stabilizers, don't, they don't support just it. Just weren't there. You know, you, you throw it and then you're, you should be able to move in that range of motion, but because you're so strong in one and weak in outside of that, it was real easy to injure yourself. Yeah. And now this is why for the person, now somebody listening is like, I don't care. I just want to build muscle, whatever. I'll take that risk. <laughs> You know, that would have been me, right, <laughs> as a teenager. I've talked or, to a few of those in the DMs. Or in my 20s. Now, here's the other part of this. So, yes, you'll lose flexibility. Injury risk goes up. You become less functional. So, great, you look nice. But now in the real world, you're actually less capable. But here's the other part of this. Your body um, has protection mechanisms. It has limiters, governors. And what it'll do is it'll actually limit your potential for strength and muscle, or it'll try to. So, if, you're so uns if your body starts to develop too much instability – your bench press won't go up, your deadlift won't go up, your squat won't go up, your overhead press won't go up. You won't build as much muscle as you can. So mobility work and training in different ranges of motion. This is why a program like MAPS Performance, right? This is a an athletic, uh, functional-minded strength training program. Do you know how many bodybuilders would build more muscle if they followed a three-month training program like that every two years? You know, just every two years. Once every two years, two or three months of that style of training, yeah. So it's totally different from bodybuilding. You're not doing your normal bodybuilding training. That's okay. It's only a few months. Then you go back to your traditional training. And now what's happened is you've taken those governors that were stuck at eight and you've allowed them now to move up to nine or 10. So now you can progress further. You can build more muscle. You can build even more strength. Mm -hmm. So regardless of what your goal is, this is something that's very important. But I do like to touch on this flexibility component because the, the myth, there's a myth out there that um, strength training is not only not the best way to get, you know, real flexibility. It actually does the opposite. Totally not true. If you do it right, you become uh, flexible in real ways. It's it's the best way to train. What what percentage of um, genetics play in in flexibility? Would you oh, say? Yeah, big I mean, I, I, it's funny because I know that like you you find like these like yogis or or you know guys and girls that love like doing classes like that, and many times. It's it's less about that they got so good at doing that they were already really good and it had like extremely uh, large ranges of motion in most of their joints. Like, is it fifty percent, eighty percent? Is it what percentage would you say is genetics of people that have this? Like any physical pursuit, um, it plays a role. So, so you would you then would you categorize it just like strength genetics play a role in building strength yep. or muscle? Okay. Absolutely. So, yeah. So. so so wherever you're at, you can make tremendous progress. But can everybody become, you know, the guy? I went to the Cirque du Soleil performance oh, once, yeah. and there was this dude there that folded himself like himself into a pretzel, <laughs> bro. Yeah. It was it was actually disturbing. Like he yeah. would literally fold himself in half, like a like like he was like pressed in half, like a piece of paper. And bro. that's well, what's that, so crazy is like, yeah, he starts out being super flexible, then he actually trains it even further, right, to the point where like. Yeah, he can actually have his legs completely behind and then his head through. Dude, he was what when he was standing that, normal. This is how this happens. This is my point, right? Yeah, so yeah. like that's somebody who he had a propensity towards was it. already yeah. like he did he was more flexible than somebody who probably has been working on flexibility for ten years straight. Yeah. He had it naturally. Yeah. And then he also took it to the another level like a professional athlete. Well, right? actually, so, in fact, I yeah. remember I was because this is remember Jessica knows people um that work for Cirque du Soleil. So we got to like meet some of the people, or whatever, and we we're kind of backstage and I saw this guy walking around. And because he trains with such an extreme level of flexibility, he had the strangest looking posture and movement. Like I like watch, you know, somebody who understands mm. movement biomechanics. If I didn't know that that's what he did and I just saw him walking around, I would think something is different. Something was y'all like, like it was just weird. He just didn't move like a normal person and his spine wasn't, you know, you know, you got that normal kind of slight S curve. Yeah. It was almost like his back was totally straight almost. Oh. Um, yeah, it was really weird. Like you could tell something and it's because he did so much 
like like one of like one of his key acts was he would like bend himself backwards <laughs> and then twist Ugh. his spine and walk his feet around while he was doing it. I know. I, know, I, can't, I have a hard time watching that stuff. Do you? Yes. It's dude. hard to watch it. Like I don't know what it, why it that is. It feels weird. Yeah, there was also this person who did it looks alien. There was also this woman in another one I went to where they her ponytail, she had hair, she had been a ponytail. And she hung from her hair oh, and she that. would spin and do yeah, crazy acrobatics. That. Yeah. And then my daughter pointed this out. She goes, Oh my God, look at her hairline. And you, and then I wasn't, I didn't really pay attention. I looked and you could tell she'd ripped out so much hair that like her hair started right here. <laughs> Cause oh, that's how she oh, tried. Oh my God. And her neck must be so. Yeah. Like, like there's gotta be some long-term. I've seen that. I've seen them hold on with their teeth and, and, or those like clamps that they have, yeah. you know, where they just have piercings that they hang oh, by. <laughs> some people do like crazy stuff with their skin. I mean, it's, it's fascinating. I do, I do like to see the extremes though. Like that. I appreciate it. You know, people yeah. that put that kind of like discipline into well, the their th training. The thing about extremes, I think that messes people up is that they look at, um, extreme, physical pursuits or athletes. And then they attribute a style of training to creating that when yeah, in reality. Weird. It's like they're genetically yeah. gifted for that. Then they train at such a ridiculous On obsessive top of already level. being gifted. Yes. They've surpassed, yeah. they've gone well beyond like, this is good for me now into like, this is not good for me. And so it's, you can't really judge, you know, yeah, like, you can't judge. A, it's a spectacle. It's not something to pursue. Yeah, it's like <laughs> judging strength training by looking at a pro bodybuilder. It's like, well, no, that's not, that strength, yeah, it is strength training, but there's extreme. Yeah. It's well beyond what the average person yeah, would yeah. even want. Yeah. So, anyway, today's giveaway maps aesthetic. Here's how you can win: leave a comment below this video in the first 24 hours that we drop it. Subscribe to this channel and turn on notifications. If you win, we'll let you know in the comment section. Also, there's only three days left for our June special. Okay, maps cardio half off, the shredded summer bundle half off, and the bikini bundle half off. If you're interested, just click on the link at the top of the description below. All right, back to the show. I want to do uh, bring something that's like off subject, so it's a little bit of a left turn here, but I keep forgetting to talk about this, and I figure since I've been kind of a grumpy bear lately that I, I should say something <laughs> you positive. Make it is that cute. one of the Care Bears? <laughs> yeah, that is, that is grumpy bear. That was actually it, my favorite one. He funny. makes it sound <laughs> cute. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I have been. So you, And honestly, we there's a lot of cool stuff that's happening behind the scenes and with the business, and I know that the beginning of this year that we set out on this mission of – Add value, add value. Very similar to how we built this company. And of course, like any other business, real easily you can get into the weeds of revenue streams and breeding prior year and what's next and scaling and growing. And we've been on that that trajectory for the last five plus years since we started this. And something that we all got together and it was during this kind of COVID recession time and a, a lot of thought went into like, you know what, this year coming up, the focus is going to really go back to the the mindset of what built this business, which was providing so much value and free content and value and something that we haven't brought up in a while that is is doing really well. It's free. It's the newsletter that you have access to. I mean, we've invested in a professional writer to Darren, who's incredible, and we're evolving it right. So the and yeah. the reason why I, the the help and support I'm going to ask for our audience is for the feedback. You know, you can actually sign up just to receive the newsletter if you don't want any sort of um, you know promotion or anything else. So you don't want to. I know I know it's like to not want your email flooded. So this is a newsletter that comes out. Is it once every other week or once a week, Doug? Is it you know what it I is right it's now? It's every other week. So every other week right now. Uh, hopefully, we'll scale that up to more. The, the, often. the illustrations on it are great. And then the writing is amazing. Yeah, it's incredible. It's very entertaining. He's a super witty writer. And it's a great way to kind of summarize the content. If you're not an everyday listener of the podcast and you want an overview of some of the stuff that we talked about in the previous week, and oh, that might be an episode I want to go listen to and get an idea of what it's about. Uh, and we're adding things to it like fitness tips and stuff like that. So we're trying to evolve it, make it even more valuable and better. The idea is to bring the, the type of value that we've created in the podcast and the other channels that we have into the email list. The email list being transparent has been primarily used for us for marketing. It's been, we've grown the, this uh, huge email list and it's been used to basically just let our audience know when their sales and things like that. And one of the things we want to do is to find a way to actually add value to that. And that's uh, one big thing. And that's been going, it's been going for the last few months and it's been going well. The other thing that is officially live and going is the askmindpump.com, which I this think- This is an AI model. This yes. Is, this will answer, the the challenge has been, since, the start, since we started the podcast, the goal was to, you know, kind of give good information and maybe change the direction of the fitness industry a little bit 
or to counter a lot of the crap that's out there. And so, you know, one thing we do better than anybody in our space, I'll say this very confidently, is we do, more, we produce more content. That's what mm -hmm. we do. Five episodes a week. We've been doing this for, since almost the beginning. So we got a lot of podcasts out there. We got a lot of uh, thousands yeah. of hours out there. So what this AI model does, this is what's really cool. You go to askmindpump.com, you ask it a question and it goes through our episodes and it answers it the way we would answer it in our voice, essentially. And we've covered topics like multiple times. And so this is a helpful way to uh, get you right to those impactful episodes, those impactful articles, like anything we've put out with that specific subject matter. It's like, boom, here you go. Because I mean, half the time, like we're not podcasting or doing anything else for the business. It's like, we're just trying to answer questions for people as best as we can. And so well, I, don't rem do I don't remember what point it was for you guys, but I, I do remember there was a, a transition in, you know, early on uh, when the show was small and we were able to talk to every single one of our DMs and answer almost every question that came across. We, I think we did a pretty good job of doing that. Then at one point it tipped beyond that. We were still scrambling to try and answer and help as many people as we could. Um, and then it came to a point where almost every DM or every time I answered somebody, what I really, all I was really doing was spending 15 to 20 minutes finding the answer that we had already created for yeah, that. Point them to the episode. Yeah. And then just basically sending the link, oh, go to this, go to minute 15 of this episode. We talk about that in depth or, oh, here's this blog article or who's this white paper Sal wrote, or here's this free guide that we have. Like we, we have so much content now that it's it that you literally can find anything related to health, fitness, nutrition, uh, training, hormones, peptides. I mean, you name it. Uh, we've probably you, already talked about. Do it. you guys know that our who, who runs our social media uses it to answer questions in the DMs? Have yeah. you seen some of the questions? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I've seen some like real specific, like targeted so, answers. I'm like, ooh, that was a good one. Every once in a while, I'll go in the DMs to see if I can answer questions. Right. Um, every once in a while, and recently, I went in there. And the, 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 there was, I don't remember what the question was, but it was answered so well. And I'm like, and, and yeah, I probably read the same thing. The person who runs our, our social media knows fitness. Okay. But there, but this question was answered. Like I had spent an hour, like breaking it down. It was a, it was a deep medical question that was asked. Chokey is the one who runs it. And Chokey does have our bachelors already in, in Kinesis in our field. Uh, but again, it picks up all of our content. So it picked up Dr. Arlo's episode, who is a doctor speci that spe uh, that specializes. That's yeah, so like in what he said on the episode. Yes. About, yeah. So it literally gave an answer. And I've seen other ones now where I'm like, oh, she's using our thing to, yeah, to answer yeah, questions. Yeah, yeah. I, told so her I, didn't, I told her I didn't sell her out and tell her tell you that you she was using that. But yeah. Oh, I knew. I could yeah. read it, bro. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, who wrote this? But I've, I've been trying to share it with all the employees to do that. I mean, yeah. it's just, it's incredible um, how accurate it is. And, and it will only get better as more people use it as we continue to compile more content and add to it. But so far, so good. Yeah, I want to ask you guys a question. Have you, have you, any, any of you guys ever been tested for ADD? Have you? No. Tested? No. Never uh -huh. been tested? But Do you guys sure. ever suspect sure, you have? We all have it. <laughs> the, the looks I mean, there's no way we don't. So I was, so uh, I'm the only one I got, I guess, in this room that's been tested, right? As an adult. Yeah. And I remember I, I aced the test. I got a perfect score. But anyway, <laughs> um, I was reading about it. Um, Last night, so, you know, typical to someone with ADD, I either, it's like an on and off switch. I'm either way too interested in something or I'm not interested at all. If I'm not interested at all, it's very hard to get me to even pay attention. If I'm very interested, it's hard to take me away. I become hyper-focused. And this is a trait, right? So I just went down this kick on ADD because I read this article. Check this out. Out of the total, out of the, the, the total population, roughly 5% of people have ADD or what's called neurodivergent. Okay. Neurodivergence. That's is all. Just, okay. Okay. Yeah. So 5%. Now neurodivergence is there's ADD in there. There's autism. These are all these different ways. Dyslexia, I believe is in there as well, but ADD mm. is 5% of the total population. What percentage of entrepreneurs? I think oh, has ADD. 95. No, not that high. Oh, not that high. I would say 80. 20, 29, almost 30%. Oh, wow. I mean that was well, still that you're looking at six times more likely or yeah. six times more people. If you have ADD, you're 100% more likely to start a business. So twice as likely to start a new business. So I was there, I stumbled upon this woman who is going on the speaking tour and she's basically speaking out against trying to squash this out of kids. So she says, look, yeah. what we're trying to do is we're trying to force the kid to fit the environment. Mm -hmm. When what we should do is we should change the environment to fit the kid. And so she says with ADD, she says, this is, this is a natural evolutionary 
trait. There's a gene in particular called the DRD4 gene. And this helps with, uh, it, it, it encourages novelty seeking. It helps with fast moving and changing environments. This is all entrepreneurship, right? So she says, people with ADD, what were needed to think of different things, to hyper-focus on certain things, to seek out uh, novelty and risk. Um, and, and so uh, immigrants tend to have higher amounts. Uh, entrepreneurs tend to have higher amounts. I thought about this country and the high rate of Im immigrants and entrepreneurs. It's like we've kind mm -hmm. of filtered more of these people in here to, who it's have the breeding this, ground for innovation. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Pretty, pretty crazy. Right? Yeah. I also, I think it explains the, the habit that I used to have, which is like, I would, I would love the, like the, the process of building a business. Um, this is what they talked about. I love so much. And then you, you get do bored. it and then you get bored. Yes. <laughs> and then I was yes. like, then I was over it. It was like, I, once That's I was the Achilles heel. Yeah. Once I proved that I could do it and I was successful at it, I was already bored with it. And I wanted you to know this is the first business I've ever done where I haven't been bored. Yeah, and I think because there's so many legs yeah. that we can keep pursuing. That's, that's why. why yeah. If you really think about it, um, I mean, if you were to, it's like, constantly challenging. What it is. Well, so, I mean, yeah. it, uh, when I think back to all, all the small businesses that I built or had success with, uh, <clears throat> and if you were to say that's a business by in itself, and then you were to look at this one, there's like nine of those within this. Yeah, you know, so that so and every year there's like a new yeah, and then every year we add a add a, add a new leg or a new layer. Uh, to it. So it's, it's always giving you that sense of starting a new business. I feel like even when we're not, it's all underneath this one. So it just, it just, you know, I wish, well, I'm glad, I'm glad it wasn't super popular when we were kids to treat. Um, uh, and, and thankfully I found my passion soon. So I went in that direction because I would have struggled. I tell you what, man, I got away with with, with uh, my type of ADD for a long time because uh, I also have a really good memory for certain things, so I could kind of get away. But, but when it came to the point where, you know, as you progress in school, you need to be more organized mm -hmm. and, and you have to learn concepts based on older concepts and you have to be able to organize how you study. When that started to happen, I started to kind of struggle with subjects that I wasn't interested in. Had I not found fitness and gotten to the gym, because I started doing that out of high school, I would have been, it would have been so tough for me to to continue with traditional education and yeah. college. I mean, it would have been really hard. It's an interesting thought because like, I do wonder a lot of times if like they had some kind of different schooling for me available. Cause I know that this is such a good fit for me and like entrepreneurship. It's a great fit. But uh, in terms of me actually like grinding my way through that discipline of having to be organized, having to be on time, having to, you know, complete tasks and do things like methodically and, and, and approach it like that. Like I wouldn't have worked on that, you know, yeah. I'd been like, Oh, fuck that. Yeah. You know, like let somebody else do that. Uh, but having that skill, I had needed that skill to then, uh, actually create uh, an environment for me to enjoy, you know, the, the, the true talent that I think that I possess. Yeah. There can't be, it can't be all bad to have to learn to, to fit in this, this, you know, I don't know the way this education system, right. That we've, we've decided to, to run, right. Like there's gotta be some value in that you've had to learn, even though it's not your personality and your, what you would gravitate. Well, I to. guarantee all of us develop skills, to be able to, to, to deal with it. I know yeah. I did. Yeah. You know what I, you know what I, I'll give you an example. Yeah. I found a lot of cheats around things. I'm well, sure. <laughs> I'll give you an example. Like for me, I put, uh, certain objects at the only in certain places in the house and here at work, you'll notice I always put certain things in the exact same place. Why? Mm -hmm. Because as a kid, I would lose shit. Mm -hmm. And so I developed this, I, do the same I developed thing. this behavior where my keys only go here or here. Mm -hmm. I'll never put them down anywhere else. Or my wallet only goes here or here or my, you know, whatever goes only here or here. Otherwise I'll lose it. Or as a manager, as a general manager of a gym, if I got a, uh, like a paper that I had to sign or read over, I did it right then and there. Cause mm -hmm. I knew if I put it down, gone. It's, it's the like, same it's like as responding to somebody or addressing a problem. I have to do it right then. Yes. Like right then. Or like, you know, setting my day up. I have to have my clothes there looking at me, ready to go. <laughs> I don't want to look for it at all. Yeah. Like it's, it just fucks me up. Do you know what you, you remember when we had Shalene Johnson on here and, she, and we brought up the, uh, she brought up that one of her first tips for somebody before they start to lose weight. And stuff like that is to like declutter their house. Yeah. I was watching the, uh, John Deloney, yeah. uh, mm -hmm. speak a speech that I didn't get a chance to see it when we were yeah. at Ramsey and it was really good. And, uh, you know, he had a part in there that I thought was really interesting. And I think I forget who he, it was like some, 
wasn't it a monk. It was some some minimalist guy that um, that told him that you know every 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 materialistic thing that we have is communicating to us yeah, at all times. I know. And so he made the comment of like when you when you and mm. then he like and he kind of told him like when he first heard it, it was like oh whatever that's bullshit or whatever and then he gives this great example of like walking through his house and walking past the dishes and the dishes are full in the sink and him going like oh my god and yep. I should do that oh, I don't do that and then he goes through like this this and then he goes by his gym and his in his house and he hasn't worked out in three days and it's like it's like man it's so true the more things that you you have in your house especially if it starts to clutter up and it's it you can see it at all times that even it, like it's not literally talking to you but it's like it it is mentally distracting you and taking energy away from other things that you could potentially focus on and such a cool and and Shalene Johnson was actually the first person that I've ever fitness person that I ever heard give that as it as a as a advice I think it's really yeah, smart. It's smart yeah it's a really and I and when I think back to my personally that that has to I have to have my house in order if I'm gonna go do like my mm -hmm. workout there's stuff that I have totally. that has to be first for me to feel like I'm going to go do something else in addition to that. Because if I go do that and that's still out of order, I can't seem to be yeah, all part in. Part you still going to be hanging on. Yeah, yeah. totally. But, you know, what's interesting too is as, as I was reading about this is no two people are the same. Some people are way more over here on certain things and mm -hmm. other things are way more over here. Like the organization piece, I have to be, I, I got to be as bad as it gets. Like it's just, I don't <laughs> think there's anybody, I don't think I could get any worse and, and, you know, people think, oh, you just don't try. You don't, no, no, you don't understand. Like, this is me trying for years. Like, this is me. This is as good as I've, as, as I've been able to get with some of my organization. But on the other side, if I get hyper-focused, you won't find anybody who can digest and absorb and remember and regurgitate information like I can. So that became, for me, a superpower that really wasn't useful until I started a podcast. Like, it was good for conversations. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. So pretty much 35 years ago. Ah, you're life. a closing machine, you <laughs> know. Like, I mean, it, it, was cool. it was cool when I was a trainer because I could talk to people yeah. about cool stuff. Yeah, like, yeah, wow, yeah. sound knows <laughs> a lot of random cool, shit. Cool know? magic trick before. But, you know, on a podcast, it's great, right? Because I could talk about different things. So what about my commercial jingles? That's <laughs> yeah. shit. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, exactly. You know, yeah. so anyway, it's just, <laughs> I, love, I loved it. But yeah, I went down a rabbit hole about that and- uh, it made a lot of sense. So. I mean, I, I would think that we all kind of have a little bit of it for sure. Well, imagine if when you were a kid, I was thinking about this, Mike. Imagine if I was thinking when I was a kid, if I had a really good, like really good teachers or let's say my parents homeschooled me and were super aware of this. They just weren't, but let's say they were. They would have been able to point me in directions that I wanted to go and I would have just been a machine. Yeah. I remember specifically being in history class, specifically, and it was just boring. The teacher was crappy and whatever. And I'm just sitting there. And I picked up the textbook and I got into uh, ancient history. And I read the whole book in two days. The rest of the whole year, I paid no attention. But the teacher constantly tried to get me to, to, to like pick on me. To, oh, he's not paying attention. Sal, so what's the answer to whatever? And I knew the answer. And I remember I was frustrated with Shadow. He's like, I know you were talking to somebody. How do you know that? I'm like, I read the whole fucking thing in yeah. two days. I really got into it. Yeah. But now I'm bored. So, whatever. well, I mean, when you think about how our education system was structured and informed, and for what reason, it wasn't like, for entrepreneurs. No, no. So it's like, I mean, you do a little bit of digging and, and find out the history of that, and, it, and then make go ahead and make the decision for yourself. Do you think this is ideal for most people, and who is it really serving? I know. You know, it's for big corporations yeah, to get workforce. a bunch of worker bees yeah, working for them, know. and it's like. So I guess if you just want to fall in line and you want to be that person and you're totally content with working the nine to five and having a decent salary job and that that to you is what you want, then so be it. Then, okay, then the education system's not bad. But if you uh, aspire for something different, it's like this is not the ideal situation. I think if you don't fit in, but you're curious and passionate, there is a path for you. Mm -hmm. And just find that what your passion is, what your skill is. And there's a way to, to, to use that. Uh, to your advantage. Now, what do you, what do you, do you, uh, Justin, because I know you're, you're planning on homeschooling, right? Is that still the plan? Oh, oh yeah. Jessica is, is going to 100%. She's, she's going to handle that. And I'm very much on board uh, with that. So, so that's how you're going to solve this. Yes. How do you, how do you plan to, to deal with the boys? Because they just, they strike me as they're going to have you. Mm -hmm. as their personality trait like mm -hmm. and they're going to want that like do you think about that right now like and as they're going through regular yeah. schools like they're in a public school right now right so like yeah there's different challenges between both of them um so everett and seeing ethan's experience in junior high i wasn't real impressed uh so we're looking at this nature academy for everett 
Uh, and they offer that for junior high, which is great. So that way too, we can kind of figure out where we're going to be with high school after that. And it's not too far away. Um, but he, you know, his friends are still kind of close proximity. And so it's, it's not like he's losing out on a lot of that. And, um, with Ethan, it's been interesting because he just, I, I didn't realize this. I kind of had a, an inclination, but I just thought he's been super lazy lately. And I've been on him about like studying very last second and then doing all these things like where he does, he figures out that he can do makeups and then do like, so he'll just wait to do that, do everything like, and it drives me crazy. Uh, but he gets like A's dude. He gets like, it's easy for like, oh. this stuff is too easy for him. Like the work is, is like simple. And like the, the workload now that the kids have, is just, it's embarrassing. Really? Uh, so I'm looking at other schools uh going into high school so he'll be in uh eighth eighth grade and then um after that we're gonna look at uh maybe go and pursue a different type of high school for him yeah um and then we'll see kind of wherever it's at and i'm really just trying to like make sure it's a good fit for them individually like uh, yeah what you know so pay attention to kind of their interests and like what strikes them is like yeah you know the sort of um, subjects and things that they're the most passionate about. What's it? What's a nature's Academy? What exactly is that? So it's like, uh, it's more, um, kind of Montessori esque, like very outside and, oh, and they it's learn aesthetic. Aesthetic. Yeah. Yeah. Kinesthetic learning kind of mm -hmm. situation, which he'll, he'll do so much better. At. So does oh, that, totally. is that work in conjunction with the school or is mm -hmm. that like a different school completely? Like where he's not going to go to his other school. Yeah. It's a different school, but it's oh. in the same, um, uh, district district yeah oh wow that's awesome yeah so I, I and, even, but but it's like it's you, you not everybody gets into it it's like a small group and mm. um so you have to but thankfully uh we we kind of know somebody who's pulling strings for us so You're hopefully famous. we get him in yeah the, the yeah i'm gonna he's use the, the cart <laughs> <laughs> I'm a P lister yeah, yeah. <laughs> podcast. No, no, you're, the, you're the best. Remember, you're a meth dealer. Yeah. Oh yeah, I'm a meth dealer. <laughs> you know, like I'll, I'll yeah, I'll, let, I'll shake him down. Yeah, let know. us kid in. <laughs> 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 that guy. Exactly. Anyway, dude. I, so speaking of like going down rabbit holes and stuff, I don't know why I read about this, but it's really interesting. It was interesting to me for ten minutes. Do you guys know what Merkins are? You ever heard of Merkins? Merkins? Yeah. No. This was a thing. <laughs> I'll pull it up because. This was a thing uh, I want to say in the in the like in the like 1600s, 1700s, 1800s. So that's like long time ago. Merkins, right? yeah. So these were pubic wigs, pubic know. wigs, Pu pubic hair wigs, pubic hair wigs. So, so you may be asking yourself why now like, prostitutes wore them. Like that's let me let me let me uh, so add to it. So they would wear them so that their bush is sticking out more. So they wore pubic hair <laughs> wigs in, in those days. We're talking like we're talking like 1500, 1600, all the way up to like the, the 1800s. They would wear it was a thing. They would wear wow. these these pubic hair wigs. Uh, so so what's your what's your theory as to why? See, oh, <laughs> there so, it is. Uh, wow. <laughs> so, so that guy's holding open a box with different so my, a my bunch guess of furry is, triangles. Is, right there. I'm gonna I'm gonna go the evolutionary angle, like you would probably go on this, which is that it, you know a, a robust bush probably means that you are more fertile and healthy. Ooh, you're close. Okay. You're really close. Okay, think about think about how dirty or stylistic. Uh, hold on, think about how filthy. <laughs> yeah. People were back then in general. Not oh, about so, okay. So all the hair catches all the fucking dander and shit, and so your your insides well, what, are clean. Yeah, what else? Yeah, but what about the, the crabs and all the things that live in there, man? Okay, so so prostitutes Bastard used to though. shave. They used to shave all their pubic hairs to avoid getting lice and crabs from all these just these men that they would have so sex then you, with. So you switch them out? So then you uh, would get a merkin, which would cl you'd clean. You could fucking clean the shit out of it, right? And you'd put it on. So why not just rock the shaved? They, because that they wasn't, didn't like it back then. Yeah, that wasn't a popular thing That was then. not a popular thing back then. In wow. fact, shaved pubic area meant you were sick. Because back in those days, not the way healthy. you got rid of li lice... The way you got rid of lice back then is you shaved your head. Oh wow! wow. So if you had a shaved head and you walk around, people are like, "Oh, you had you got 
license. Bring back the Merkin. Bring back back the Merkin, dude. (laughs) Can you buy them still? Because every once in a while, I'm in the mood for like a Merkin. You know, I tell Katrina, I'm like, (laughs) yeah. I'm like, we've been doing this. We get a strip Merkin. I go, hey, I like, I I love this. Little style. Maybe throw when we change it up a little bit every once in a while. What would you do? Can I get a Merkin, Doug? Can you see? I'll see. Merkins are still used. Are they in Hollywood? This is great. In Hollywood, what's great about this is we could do the Merkin for a week and then I can get rid of it. No, no, no. You know why they use them in Hollywood? Wow. So I'm going to read about the presence of Merkins protects the actor from inadvertently performing full frontal nudity. So some contrasts specifically require nipples and genitals to be covered in some way. So they'll use fake pubic hair to cover. Well, that doesn't look like a Merkin does. It looks like a little lizard. I don't don't know what Doug's looking up. Can you, can you order me one? (laughs) Uh, You can order your own, (laughs) Adam. Can Can you wear your head? Can you, can you, can can I see so I can decide what what style I want? Can you bejazzle it? There you go. There's a couple, right? Oh, you can't see those. Let me, uh, Adam's going to come to work tomorrow with a weird triangular uh, toupee. It's for the wife. I'm going to surprise her. He's oh, nice oh, her. <laughs> oh, shit. Just as a wizard. Ooh, I don't here. know about that as well. Body hair, fake pubic hair stickers. Wow. Oh. That's. Can okay. I get. Um, I mean, is this from real. People? Can we get like. No, a, no. That's all more of a. That's disgusting. That's, that's scary. Like a, like, a, like a dirty blonde look. What? <laughs> uh, maybe they haven't. This is actually Walmart. They sell them. What? Walmart? Yeah, Amazon. Walmart. Wait a minute. Hold on. Walmart. Hold on. Hold on. <laughs> Walmart is what? selling body hair, fake pubic hair stickers. God. I. Did what? Not know these things. Walmart sells everything. Yeah. <laughs> Let's go down, Doug. There was some more. Oh, was there? When you went down, yeah. Well, look down. at the ones on eBay have. It's not scrolling. It's I find it a little bit disturbing that everything coming up below it is children's cho- toys. Uh, no, yeah. it's Why are you not. Combo it. Why? Well, well, it does oh, say it does say that, that that's for doll dolls right there. That yeah, one. but you know they make dolls that are. Oh god. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I know. Well, yeah. Find me the best Merkin place, Doug. Uh, okay, I I'll make that yeah. my mission. <laughs> <laughs> my Merkin yeah, mission. It's, it's a weird looking hair, hair for her birthday. Girl, he just blew so my weird. mind, right? Hey, there. Yeah, someone's gonna amazing. find it and be like, "Is this go here? <laughs> Is this a goatee?" <laughs> well, okay, so I'm, I'm proud to be a Merkin. Yeah, yeah. No. Merkin. <laughs> Uh, you guys remember a long time ago, and I was talking about like back in medieval times, how they used to have to kind of. Um, add bells when they would like bury people. Oh, like, just in case they were actually. Oh, alive. oh yeah, yeah, right? yeah. Okay. You so, know. By the way, you know why they did dead that? ringer. <laughs> Do you know why they found they did that? Because they, they accidentally buried alive people. You know how they knew that? They would move bodies a couple times. They'd open the casket and alive. scratch marks oh, would be inside yes. the like the Which person tried to get like out. The worst. Thought. So you think that we've probably evolved, right? Like we've gotten like more sophisticated as a society and whatnot, like since then. Uh, like we know when someone's dead. Yeah, like we know when somebody's dead. We like have people to confirm and all that. So um, I, I believe it's in Ecuador. It's some South American country recently uh, where they were having a wake for their grandma. And uh, beforehand, she had like a, a stroke in cardiac arrest. And then like they actually had the doctors, you know, pronounce her dead. Um, she got wrapped up. She was like in the... Um, in the coffin and uh, the family members were there. They stood there for like four or five hours and they were all, you know, you know, observing and Crying, grieving and, 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 and they started to hear just like knocking noises and just kept getting louder and louder. And then the coffin started shaking and everybody freaked the fuck out. Right. Open the key. She's still alive. Wow. She's wrapped all the way up too. like, they wrapped her up and she was alive. Oh my God. What? And fighting like her way out to try and like get, you know, out Are of the coffin. Are you serious? Yeah. yeah. This happened like recently. <laughs> oh my God. Isn't that crazy? How terrifying. How does that even happen? Right? Like, come on. Well, if there's a disease. I, I know there's a disease. I don't know if this was her, but there's a disease where it, that y- your heart rate will slow down so much that without really paying attention or sophisticated. <laughs> so, so much to nothing? Well, yes. no, not to, not to that. Yeah, obviously not absolutely. to nothing, right? Oh, my Does, God, dude. Pick it up. Yeah. That's crazy. Well, yeah. so along those lines, you want to hear what I just, I just read yesterday? So there was a guy, a dad, talk about this is the most messed up prank of all time. So apparently he was pissed off. I'm going to read about it. He got pissed off because nobody ever invited him to anything. His family never invited him to things. His, co- his cousins, his aunts, uncles, his kids. So he faked his own death. So he, he faked his own death. And at the funeral, people are there crying, whatever. And he shows up in a helicopter. And he goes, uh, you know, this is because you guys never invite me to anything. <laughs> and there's a video of it, dude. And people are like, some people are happy. Like, oh, my God, he's alive. Other people are like, fuck you, dude. <laughs> 
<laughs> the hell's wrong with him, dude? Why don't you just say something? <laughs> you made your point, Carl. Hey, what yeah. a what a risk, though. You know, like that'd be so risky. You do that, and it, like ends up being like shitty. Hardly anybody shows up oh, to you. Exactly. That would You're be like. like all sad. He, like, yeah, crushes them. Yeah. yeah, that would be the worst, like, dude. Well, oh, yeah. Especially if you're a guy who you, doesn't get invited nowhere. You don't get invited anywhere. There's a good chance nobody shows up to your, or your funeral. It's because he smelled, Carl. You know, oh, like, you should have just asked. Well, Where so deodorant? Well, that's so crazy. Uh, anyway. yeah. So I also read about, um, I don't know how this came up, but um, you guys obviously know the term blue balls. So this is actually, they think, might actually be a real thing. I thought this oh, was fake. Please say it is. I thought dudes made this yeah. up. To coerce, you know, girls right. or whatever. Like, oh, yeah, if you don't, you know, have sex with me, it's going to hurt. Oh, I'm going to be in dire straits. Yeah, here. and I'm like, yeah. get out of here. That's well, so stupid. No, this yeah. is actually, they studied it, and they said that it might actually be a real thing. Apparently, the um, blood, there's vasodilation, and if it doesn't, uh, if, if it doesn't help, it's, I guess, it, it, the, the, it, you get vasoconstriction constriction after finishing, but if you don't, it can cause severe pain, and they've examined mm. this or, or observed this in people. So apparently, it's a real thing. I don't know why. Why, the, why do you think the term "blue balls"? Because the vasodilation causes the 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 veins and capillaries to expand, and it can look blue. Ah, uh, because that's this is what they're theorizing. Okay. I thought it's. I still think it's bullshit. I think, yeah, I think really? assholes are yeah, making this shit up. I sure felt that way when the like, girlfriend left me hanging when I, I was mean, a kid. I was you eight, actually got blue balls. I was eight. I mean, I don't. I didn't actually didn't. My balls didn't turn blue. That's why I asked you where the blue thing come from. But I remember being like, that, that was painful. Like yeah. emotionally or physically? No, physically. Yeah, emotionally. <laughs> emotionally. Rejection. Maybe it was so emotional that I felt that you felt yeah, manifested yeah, physical pain. Yeah, you know, I, I, my balls would hurt. You know what? You wouldn't hurt? No. You never, that's never happened Yeah, but to you? it finds no. its way out, dude. That's yeah, like, eventually you know, it gets relieved. That's it. But, but yeah, <laughs> eventually mean, it gets relieved, or I probably relieve myself by the time oh I got home. <laughs> But I mean, like when that's you, sleeping. Dunn, See, Dunn, you I told you I'd get back to this. You don't. You don't remember that. You don't remember having like a high school girlfriend and then oh, like yeah. and then working it all the way up to that. And, oh yeah, yeah. I've it's achy, that, bro. Man. It's a. Achy. I never had that. Really? No, it didn't hurt. Wow. Well, I you were married. My you were married by seventeen. Yeah, anyway. I wasn't right. Yeah. So you were, well, you're hella young. <laughs> yeah. you were hella young. <laughs> Twenty-two. You were That's into right. the whole heavy petting. Uh, yeah. You know, yeah. Yeah. I was heavy petting for a long time. Yeah. So heavy that was, petting. That's why you lost your hand dry humping. I was dry humping for years. You were twenty-eight when you lost your virginity. So you had a lot of blue balls. You got purple. Yeah, that's why, dude. There's only so many hugs you yeah. know I can take. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> then, ah, it hurts. That's terrible. That's terrible. Big hugger, dude. Anyway, so yeah. it's a uh, Adam. You, I, I saw you earlier talking about Netflix. Uh, are they? Oh, so they okay, are they? In, they're doing the thing. So now, yeah, I they're... brought that. I brought it up originally, like what two or three months ago, and it's in full full swing now. So. Um, They're cracking down on people sharing their past. Yeah, I was talking. Andrew and I were talking before the podcast, and you know he's uh, he's actually busted. He was he was stealing Netflix. Um, <laughs> no, maybe him. maybe you, you guys maybe you guys haven't seen it yet, but they they've cracked down now. If you're sharing passwords, did you with, know the revenue went up, bro? That's why I brought it up. It's like crazy amount. Yeah, people thought it would crush them. They, they had like made more money. they had like back to back like record months. Is that right, Andrew? It was like back to back record months. Um, the number I saw is they increased their subscribers by 105. percent Wow! Whoa! Yeah. All right, so we need to crack down. Just on people a bunch share, of moochers out people there. People share maps yeah. programs. We well, you know down. what I thought about? I mean, so interesting strategy, right? Hmm. Allowing it, allowing people to to use it, share it, get them used to all the great. Brilliant. Things. Yeah, get them kind of addicted, and then go up, ah, and then you go, okay, we're gonna piss off. A small percentage of people are gonna be like, "Oh fuck Netflix! I'm never using it again because now I can't share it." But you'll more it's like than the make thirty up day for it. trial. But, yeah, yeah, but more people will be like, mentality. "Damn, I don't, I've, I don't want to go without it now." I've gotten I was so halfway in the season of whatever. Yeah, or I've gotten so used to having it for wow. so long, and you just, you know, bite the bullet. And pay no more strangers. You gotta think though, it's the moochers that are getting cut off, so they had never paid any money anyway. Right. So now it's just like, okay, well, I guess I have to pay the money now. Yeah. So a good percentage of the moochers are gonna go. Yeah. Are gonna have to now, what I want to, what, what I don't understand what's going to happen, which is so, what happens to people like us who have multiple properties? Right. And it's always you're the same just signing. No, in. no, it's, 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 it's attached to an IP address. Oh. So, like, if you, and, and so it's more your Wi Fi. So, if this Wi, so it, it'll be attached to that. So, it's like, because like Andrew's sharing your dad's, right? Yeah. So, there's an option basically just say that you're traveling. And then if it's your account, so let's say you go to a different location where you have your Netflix account, but it's not your original home. You just put through your travel link, get a verification code, and you're in. Oh, okay. okay. So, um, but then you can't use them both simultaneously, probably. I haven't tried that. Probably. So, so what it'll do? Okay, that makes sense. Yeah, you're probably. So right. what it'll do is it'll shoot. So if it's mine, I'm up in Truckee. 
I log into my Netflix there, it's going to prompt and go right to my cell phone. Yeah. But if I was using Justin's Disney or, Ju or it's not Disney, D Justin's Netflix up yeah. there at the Truckee house, it would code him and then I wouldn't, he wouldn't be, and then he wouldn't verify it, unless it. ahead of time. So that's how they're going to, that's how they, crack. okay, that makes sense. That's how they cracked down on it. Then. Wow. Yeah. And the revenue went up. Everybody thought that would go down. Mm, yeah. Just like um, interesting. You know what's interesting? It's so uh, something similar with Twitter, right? Elon said you're gonna you're gonna pay for verification or whatever. It was like, oh my god, it's gonna kill Twitter and right. crush the revenues. How how is Instagram? Uh, have they boosted the revenue? Because they just start rolling out the whole blue checks are everywhere now. You know, like it, it went up. It like went up a lot too. I actually people want, I four thousand that following. Was in my notes a while back. I should have bring that. It up. It went up. Yeah, Instagram had to have. Mm -hmm. I mean, and of course, Twitter was the one that kind of set the mm -hmm. stage. Maybe, for that. maybe Doug or Andrew can find that when when Instagram rolled out their blue blue check. What did it instantly boost revenue? Like it was, you know, I don't want. It wasn't a billion. It was like millions of dollars. Yeah, and I don't know if it was like they felt they did that. I thought it was going to feel yeah, six hundred and sixty million. Sick, almost so half by selling forty four million. Bro, In, uh, yeah, a half a billion dollars <laughs> over a half a billion dollars <laughs> for doing like, nothing. But it was like that. Wow. Hmm. That was 44 million blue checks were all sold in one day. Wow. Wow, dude. That's insane. Dude. 600, a, 660 million in 24 what a, what a fun day. Just <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's yeah. It. yeah. <laughs> Nothing, just, right? Just, coming on just, sky. just blue checks I mean, falling yeah. out of your face. Yeah. Try it with our listeners. We'll verify you that you're a mind pump listener yeah. for four ninety nine right now. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> just verified just, pump head. Over overnight. Freaking six hundred million dollars. That's, 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 that's crazy, nuts, man. So, that's do you crazy. think? Okay, so we actually haven't talked about this in a long time with you guys. Is you know we we used to debate like a year or two ago about like the streaming wars, like who's going to win, where's it, where's it at? Maybe Andrew can pull up who's leading the way right now. I I, I think HBO Max, Apple keeps putting out in, incredible content. I think Netflix sucks. I really do. I know that's like it's like the junk food of of streaming yeah, services. Yeah, they haven't had any good good like real quality shows in a long time. Like mm -hmm. every once in a while, they Stranger pop Things out I love, like. A decent like the the Arnold thing was cool yeah yeah it was a cool doc um yeah. but they have that I haven't seen like it, it an original that was like a Netflix original that was like oh that's a really good show that's like no. not like the level of like what Apple's I think Apple's catching like up they've been putting a lot of money and effort into their programming for sure so it's just, yeah you know what I can't I wonder if at some point there's gonna be an app that connects to all those streaming services you own mm -hmm. and then it just shows you the shows and then you depending it doesn't matter so what. you know that apple does that right so apple when you ha when you have apple tv i can see my showtime my hbo my disney my hulu all through the netflix? apple through apple not netflix oh, okay they're not connected at all with with netflix right i don't think my netflix i can see through there but like you know so i can be on my apple tv dashboard and it'll put my popular shows and like that, okay. and it'll be on all those different stream platforms. Do you do you have Apple TV? I do. Yeah. I have Apple TV. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. So you know, you you don't no, have don't TV. Have How come? I don't know. Huh. Yeah. Dude, if if Disney didn't have Mandalorian, I'd be out. Like that's the one thing keeping me there. Yeah. Like I haven't seen a really good show from them either, which is weird because you know they have everything. They bought you know, every franchise. Do you know what show I watched? Did, Katrina and I watched it just the other night. We we're in the mood for this. It's like her and I. One of our favorite movies, Miracle on Ice. Like what happens? To, like what happened to Disney? Promote like doing like good old movies like that. That was that was so, good. Yeah. Such a good story. That's a true story. That's why. Yeah. It was so, yeah. So crazy. I know. Like the, it's not like there's not a bunch of great stories like that. Mm -hmm. It's like they should tell more stories like that. That was a great, great. That's probably one of my favorite. Uh, I am excited though about the uh, this is the um, Jonathan Pagiao's. Um, He's fairy retelling tales. fairy tales, yep. yeah, and so he's putting a lot of effort into old stories like Snow, Snow White because I know we kind of talked about this before, but Dude, uh, they're all going to be books, really, really nice yeah. looking, like four well like, illustrated books, like, like tangible yeah, or digital? female lead tangible. and four like male lead, uh, you know, fables for and kids and their parents, fairy tales. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can't wait to. to, to, yeah, to I'm, to, I'm, actually gonna I'm totally going to get those. Yeah, hundred yeah. percent. Hey, um, uh, I was reading about the science around terpenes. Uh, yesterday, and I did not know how far the science has gotten. It's gotten pretty far. Do you guys know what terpenes are? It's basically the uh, little the, the the oils that are on the, the plant that's on the so, cannabis plant. Yes, yeah. So hemp and marijuana, right? They have so it gives it its different flavors. And, yeah. So there's cannabinoids, which yeah. are like CBD, THC, CBC, CBN. Like these are all cannabinoids. But then there's the terpenes. And the terpenes give it like it's different smells, mm -hmm. like limoline, uh, limoline, I think is one of them. Myrcene is another one. Uh, pi uh, pineal, I think is another one. So that's why some 
plants smell different than others? Well, they didn't think, uh, you know, for a long time, they didn't realize that terpenes had effects on you. So, you know, and speaking of cannabis, one strain is going to make you feel energized and the one's going to make you feel sleepy and relaxed. They thought it was the cannabinoids. Right. But what used to fly in the face of that was, well, the cannabinoid profile is very similar between this one and this one, mm -hmm. but why does this one knock me out yeah. and this one make me hyper? It's the terpenes. Yeah. So two terpenes in particular I was reading about, lim uh, limonene provides antidepressant effects and they say it brightens the effects of the cannabinoids. Myrcene provides calming and sedative effects. This mm. is the couch lock phenomena or relaxing type phenomena. Okay, mm -hmm. so where am I going with this? This is part of the entourage effect that you get when you consume full plant versus going with like, let's say you just use CBD. Oh, I read all these studies, studies on CBD. It's good for inflammation. It does this, that, and the other. And then you go work with a company like Ned, who we work with, that doesn't just use CBD. They don't take an extract of a cannabinoid from the plant and take everything out. They take the whole plant. Mm -hmm. They'll breed a plant for a particular profile, but they'll take the whole plant, put it in oil or capsule or product. And that's why even if it has the same CBD content as a CBD product, that's real because a lot of them aren't, you just feel way better. What's going on? It's the uh, entourage effect that you get from Ned. This is why the hemp oil from Ned, so many people send us DMs are like, I've used CBD for so long. I went with Ned. Wow. What a difference. What's going on? I'm like, it's not the CBD. It's all the other stuff and how they work together. To provide this so effect. Ned was way, obviously way ahead on this, and we knew way that we, we knew that when we started working with him, and we had a chance to talk to him before we even and partnered up. Do you see the market shifting because there was this quick rush to totally. you know extracting you know and isolating CBD and marketing that, and it, do you see these companies pivoting and starting to now offer a full spectrum version? Yeah, you, you so it's all, it's in the marijuana space. You see this already, yeah. where you can buy now products like edibles and stuff that will have specific terpenes in them or combinations of cannabinoids. It's no I, longer just THC, right? right? It'll have other stuff. The The commercial market for CBD is starting to follow. So you're starting to see now um, products that are um, promoting this entourage effect. It's more expensive. It's more expensive to do this. It's, it's, it's a, it takes more, it's better processing. Um, but because the market is so competitive, uh, like any competitive market, the better ones start to rise and the crappy stuff starts to fall off. Well, they definitely need to go in and, uh, kind of help provide materials and educate these bud tenders. Have you ever oh, talked God. to them? About so God, like, Don't even start on that. I love, Oh, it's actually one of my favorite mad. things to do sometimes just cause it's just fun to hear them kind of work their way through kind of just describing and, and which, what are the characteristics are and how they're different. And like, but yeah, so Again, I, I remember, I think we were working with, uh, it was Dosis back in the day. They, I was going to bring they them knew up. It. You know, they were the, they, one of the first were on ones top of that. On, the, on the terpene science. Yes, yeah, they, they were the first people that I knew out the, outside of our circle and stuff like that that was that was and Really the only of. sense, I'll be honest, there's in the marijuana space. Yeah, uh, so, so like, Ned knows this very well. So they'll have like the brain blend. They'll have a stress blend. They'll have their general uh, hemp oil. And if you, and this is how they develop it. First off, they also use other botanicals. So they don't just use... Uh, the hemp plant that they'll have a specific breed for, let's say, energizing euphoric creativity, like the brain blend, or a profile for relaxing the body, anti-inflammatory effects, like for the anti-stress blend. They'll also combine them with well-known botanicals like ashwagandha, hmm. uh, valerian root, um, or other compounds that will either, you know, that help complement what's going on. So, and this is why I like working with them. They yeah, know their yeah. stuff. Yeah, yeah, they do. Speaking yeah. of stuff, I want to ask you, Adam. Yeah. I got a DM yesterday, or I read a DM the other day from someone who's been eating Creatures of Habit and said it is a bulking hack. <laughs> because it comes in a packet, it's super easy to, to, to mix up, 30 grams of protein. Mm. This this kid, this young kid trying to gain muscle, sent, or sent a DM and said, hey, is it okay if I eat like three packets a day? And I'm like, well, yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, well, what are you doing? And he well, goes, all I do is add it to breakfast, lunch, and dinner. So he eats the same meals. He wow. just throws a packet on. Oh my god! And because it doesn't bloat him, and it's easy to digest, and it's all the, you know, it's everything you need. It's really you know easy. It's a great. And I wanted to ask you because when you were competing, this was a staple for you. Three years. Three years. Every single morning, the first thing I ate was oatmeal. I, I'm obviously with I, the protein. Yeah, I made my own concoction. Um, in fact, the the new flavor that's coming with Creatures of Habit is the the one of my favorite, most popular concoctions that I used to make. But what I had found, and this was just like purely from trial and error, like doing different, trying different things is 
I could get up one to your point. It was easy. It was really easy to digest. I was, I come from the, you know, camp of people that have a really hard time eating really big breakfast. I, I was never a big breakfast eater. I was always like lunch and dinner, the meals later on, I could eat big, big meals and I couldn't get a big 700, a thousand calorie breakfast ever in. And so what the oatmeal did is I, I would eat it first thing when I first wake up and it would it would go down easy. So it was really easy for me to crush like a, a, a creature's a habit size bowl of oatmeal is I would find that an hour to two hours later, I was ready to eat again. Yeah. And so I could now have this three to 400 calorie bowl of high protein oatmeal. And then two hours later, now I was ready to eat again. And then I could have my steak and egg and, you know, potatoes yeah. type of meal. Now it's like 10 in the morning. I've already got 12, 1500 calories down 80, 90 plus grams of protein already done for my day. It just became, it became the staple. It was like, I literally learned that I, that was what I had to do. If I was going to stay consistent with hitting my protein intake and being able to hit the calories I needed to hit on a daily basis. That's awesome. Yeah. All right. So who's the shout out today? When do you guys uh, name somebody? Yeah. So earlier in the beginning of the show, we we're kind of talking about uh, functional uh, flexibility and like, you know, mobility and whatnot. And uh, so I was, we haven't mentioned him yet, and he's like one of the leaders in in the the especially in the strength coaching kind of sports specific world. Eric Cressy. So, oh yeah, yeah. He just just a phenomenal content. Uh, baseball G, out. right? Isn't that baseball what he started? Is his main, yeah, yeah. His his main sport. He works with all athletes, but mainly baseball. Uh, but just real quality stuff. So I think I believe it's Eric or is it Cressy Sport? Cressy Sports Performance. That's yeah, so C R E S S E Y. Yeah. So he is, uh, remind me, you know, because Cressy was one of the OGs that I remember. I remember Cressy, DeFranco. Boyle. Boyle. He's another one, yeah. Um, and who else in the, in the sports performance those world? I, know. I mean, those are, the, those are the main ones. They were, right? So when we were early, early trainers, yeah. excuse me, in our early 20s, those guys were the ones that were were really on the cutting edge science of sports performance. Greg and Cook and is more training. physical therapy. Nah, he was like, but he yeah, was he more kind of crossed over a little bit with the with the uh, functional uh, with the, with the screening uh, tests he did. But yeah, those are the main kind of sports performance guys. He's still putting out great content. Hey, you can work with a continual glucose monitor and a nutrition expert to maximize your fat loss and your fitness. They monitor your blood sugar levels and they help coach you with nutrition. This has the highest success rate of anything that we've ever seen when it comes to especially fat loss. Go check them out. Go to Nutrisense.io. So that's N-U-T-R-I-S-E-N-S-E dot I-O forward slash mind pump. Use the code mind pump and get $30 off. All right, back to the show. Our first caller is Hildy from Ohio. Hi, Hildy. How can we help you? Hello. Hi. So I'm 54, um, five foot eleven with a larger build, perimenopausal, and um, I currently weigh 196 pounds. And I'm trying to figure out what is the right calorie count for my activity level. Um, I started working out a little bit later in life, around 47, and I. Uh, I train twice a week with a trainer. I do circuit training on my own one day a week. I run three to four days a week, averaging 12 to 15 miles. And I walk or I do the elliptical alongside the, the two days that I train virtually. Um, I was um, on and off Weight Watchers for the last two decades. I finally quit last year after realizing that it was just um, becoming too obsessive on my part with the scale and seeing my weight go down and then go back up. And uh, currently I track my meals on my plate and uh, I do have fibromuscular dysplasia, which kind of restricts me with weight work, but I still am fine with, with working out with the TRX and with weights. And um, I've tried everything from calorie cuts, 24 hour fast, undulating my diet, um, bringing up the calories, bringing them back down. Uh, all, uh, all with the goal of building up my metabolism, getting stronger, leaner. And the issue is really just finding the right calorie count for what I'm doing. Okay. Hildy, 
where where do you get your information on 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 building your metabolism? What have you done to try to build your metabolism? So I'm working with a trainer. Uh, I've been with for eight years, and okay. he's a big fan of your show, also. <laughs> oh, good. Okay. So maybe he'll listen yeah. to this. Have her stop running yes. so much and doing circuit training. Yeah. If you listen to my show, you know that that's the wrong thing to do. So oh. the, the the workouts that you're doing, where you're running 12 to 15 miles a week, the circuit training is counter to what you're trying to do with boosting your metabolism. It's counter. Mm -hmm. That type of activity gets the metabolism to adapt in the other direction. Now, they're calorie burners, but that calorie burn, uh, very quickly, your body adapts and it no longer does anything for you. Now, it doesn't mean it's unhealthy for you. It's probably healthy. In fact, I would say it might even be unhealthy at this point. You said you were perimenopausal. You're probably mm -hmm. doing too much. You're probably okay. doing too much stuff and your body is just holding on to stuff. Especially if you're in a calorie restricted diet too. So you, if you're restricting circuit training, running and that, I mean, yeah. that's just, uh, yeah, it's, it's not surprising at all that we were stalling as far as our progress right now. You're, by the way, you <laughs> are a uh, representative of like 60% of the clients that we yeah. trained. Yep. Okay. So yeah. we have a lot of experience with what you're talking about. So let's start with the workout. Then we'll get to the nutrition okay. and then we'll get to the, the the root of all of this. Okay. So the workout should be completely focused on building strength. Mm -hmm. I, I want you to train in a way to build as much muscle as possible. Now, if, if that makes you worry, like I don't want to get real big muscles. Don't worry. You no, won't. Okay, good. You won't, but, but that's, what's going to move the metabolism in the right direction. It's also going to, by the way, the metabolism boost is a side effect of what's happening which is the muscle building, which is also a side effect of something else that's happening. Your hormones are going to organize themselves in a way to build muscle. So you talk about being perimenopausal. One of the best things you could do to get those hormones to regulate in a better way is to create the environment and send the stimulus for your body to build muscle. Because in order for your body to build muscle, you need what's called an anabolic hormone profile. Okay. So what does that look like? It's a it's a an appropriate testosterone level in women. Testosterone is, is important in women just like it is in men, it's just a different level. It's a balance of estrogen or progesterone. And that balance looks different when you're post when you're uh, menopausal versus pre pre, but it doesn't matter. There's still a balance that's ideal for building muscle. So it'll move towards that. You get more insulin sensitive and your growth hormone hormone levels start to rise. Okay. So uh, I would train you in a way to build strength and muscle. That would be the primary focus. Then as far as just being active. Well, let's talk about that for a second. Let's go, go a little bit deeper as far as the what the strength training looks like. Because a lot of people just assume because they pick up dumbbells or weights that they are. It is. Yeah, man. it is not. You are training like a strength athlete or like a bodybuilder. And I don't mean in terms of the intensity necessarily and all that stuff, but you're doing a set. And you're resting for two minutes. Adequate rest. And then yeah. you're doing a set, and then you're resting Which for two minutes. It's going to be really uncomfortable for you if you haven't done that before. Yeah. It's something that you have to kind of work your way through mentally. Yeah. Short rest periods or no rest periods is just cardio with weights. So even though you're using mm -hmm. weights, it's really not that different in terms of the stimulus that it's sending to the body. So we have to do a set where you do eight, let's say, eight reps or 12 reps with a good amount of intensity, trying to work on strength. Then you put the weight down, and you rest for two minutes. And then you repeat it. So you're doing sets of exercises. Uh, basically, you're doing strength training. You're doing it in a way, you're using weights in a way to build muscle and strength. And if you don't have a program of ours, I'll make sure to send you one that's appropriate. And then you could just I don't, that. but I love it. Yeah. yeah. Okay, perfect. I'll send you one that'll be just, you, you can follow the format and you can have your trainer modify it. Since they've been working with you for so long, there may be exercises that are more appropriate than some of the mm -hmm. ones that we have listed. Um, so that's, that, that's number one. As far as being active... I would eliminate the running. Do you like the run? Do you love running? Is it like your favorite thing to do or you just do it? I do. Like I've had like a, a love, I wouldn't say hate relationship over the years. Um, I was definitely faster and uh, doing more when I started out. And I've done five half marathons. I've done a lot of 10Ks, 5Ks. These days, um, I'm doing between three and four miles at a time. What, what do you hate uh, about it when you say love? Trail hate? running. You, you, what do you hate about it? The trail running? Is that what you said? No, 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 no. I love, I love trail running. No, I, I wouldn't say I hate it, but there's times when I would, I think I would lose my mojo and I'd wake up in the morning and say, Oh, I got to go out and do this. Okay. So I go through these periods of times and right now I'm in an uptake where I, do, I am excited to do it and I plan ahead. I, you know, I put my clothes out the night before I have an idea of where I'm going to go. So I have a better attitude, but if you told me, that it's getting in the way of things, then 
I'd prefer you walk. Yeah, or, or let me ask right. you this. Okay. What At do least you, for right now. Well, you said you like trail running. Let me guess. Mm -hmm. What you like about the trail running is that you're outside and you're out in nature. Okay. Can you hike? And I'm away from everything. Yeah, can yeah. you hike or walk instead? I could. Okay. Yeah. I'd rather you do that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That okay. is not going to be nearly as detrimental. So, uh, so I would walk or hike, not for the same distance, for the same time. So however long you run, turn it into a walk. Okay. Okay. So that's the same time. So how long are you running for typically? Um, I average somewhere between like a 10 and a 10, 45 minute mile. So if I'm doing four miles then it's 45 minutes, maybe. Oh, okay. Go do a 45 minute walk or hike walk. instead yep. do, that just switch okay. to that right now. Focus on strength training. We'll send you that. We'll send you a good program for that. And then as far as diet is concerned, I wouldn't worry about calories at all right now. Here's what I would do. Protein. Uh, yes. What, what's your target body weight? What would be a, like a good, healthy body weight for you? Um, I would say 175 to 180. Okay. I just haven't been there in a really long time. I've just seen it climb up between um, the medicine I've been on and just hormonal, I'm sure. Okay. And the strain, and I have put on muscle over time. So I, I would aim for 170 grams of protein a day, okay. all from whole food. So that looks like three 50 gram of protein meals, breakfast, lunch, and dinner, and then a 20 gram of protein meal in between there. Okay. Now, that, and I would, that's the goal. That is the focus. Eat mm -hmm. that first. Then the rest, just make it whole natural foods. Now, here's what's going to happen. It's going to be really hard to eat that much protein from whole foods. You're going to find your satiety is going to kick in real hard. It's going to be like, you're going to be like, oh my God, I can't eat this because protein is very satiety inducing and mm -hmm. your calories are naturally going to fall where they should if you avoid heavily processed foods. So if it's all whole natural foods and you start with the protein, so you eat breakfast, you're like, okay, I need to have 50 grams of protein. So whatever that looks like, it's probably going to be something like four eggs plus some chicken or something else in there. And you're like, okay, mm -hmm. let me eat this and then eat that. And they're like, okay, I think I'm still hungry. I'll have a little bit of fruit. Or you're probably going to be like, I don't want to eat anymore. I'm, I'm really full. Then wait till lunch and then prioritize the protein and do that again. Your calories will naturally fall where they need to. The protein is going to fuel the muscle and the metabolism. And then from there, you're going to start to see the body compositions uh, start to change. So, so that's, that's, that's where I'll have you go. And it's better than what you did before with Weight Watchers or anything else because I'm not telling you to take anything out. I'm not telling you to cut anything. I'm not necessarily telling you to hit targets except for protein. And if anything, you're, it's going to change from feeling like you're restricting, like you did when you were cutting calories, mm -hmm. to what's probably going to feel like is you're stuffing yourself because protein is so, so satiety inducing. Like hitting 170 grams of protein every single day, I'll be surprised if you're able to do it without adding protein shakes. From whole natural foods, you're going to be like, oh my gosh, this is just, I don't know if I can eat this. That's how it's going to feel but your calories are going to fall in an appropriate in a, in a, into an appropriate place. And what to expect is actually you'll probably feel and see physical change and strength before you see scale weight go down. So don't get okay. hung up on let's say you're listening to what we're saying and you're being very consistent with it for a month and you're like, damn it, the scale hasn't moved. Don't get hung up on that. Uh, focus more on how you like look. So you can look at yourself and go. If, and then what I suggest normally when I t put somebody on a program like this, I go get get in a bathing suit, take a picture of yourself front side back where you're at at first thing in the morning, say Friday or Monday morning, and then four weeks later, same thing again, first thing in the morning, Friday or Monday, whatever day you do it, and 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 be honest with yourself, like do I look and feel better than what I did here and there? And I promise you will see a difference from, from those two points that will happen faster than the scale starting to drop. Cause we got to build the metabolism. Right. We got to build muscle. There's a good chance that we'll see a nice, even exchange of building muscle yeah. while, while losing body fat, which will change your body. It will feel tighter. It will look better, but the scale may kind of stay the same initially before you start to really see the weight drop. What kind of access to exercise equipment do you have? Do you have a gym or do you work out? At oh, home? I put a whole gym in my basement. I oh, cleared out yeah. when my kids left the house. I <laughs> so I've got a TRX hanging from my ceiling. I've got a, a bench. I've got different sizes of kettlebells, um, different weights going, starting from five pounds to 30. Um, but my weight limit is 30 right now okay. because of the FMD. Um, I've got a BOSU trainer. 
uh, resistance bands. So you have dumbbells. You have dumbbells, right? I, up, up. I have dumbbells pretty much every size up okay. to 30 pounds. Okay. Then, then uh, MAPS Anabolic is the program I'm going to have you do. And okay. I want you to start in pre-phase. And, and go ahead and do the three-day-a-week version. So there's a two-day-a-week and a three-day-a-week version. Do the three-day-a-week version because you've been working out. So you've got some fitness. Do the dumbbell at home version. So there's a modifier modification in there where it's just dumbbells. Um, mm -hmm. Otherwise it, it uses barbells. It doesn't sound like you have barbells. So follow the one that's dumbbells. Do no other strength training, no circuit training, no nothing else. Just follow the MAPS anabolic program as it's laid out. And your trainer can look at it and modify it if they need to. But if they try to cut your rest periods, don't do that. They try to combine exercises and do whatever then, then make sure you have him listen to this episode. Or give him give give us his phone number. We'll call him. Yeah. <laughs> we'll put him on the show. Call, call his ass. Yeah, because you got <laughs> we have to put you in the direction of building. That's what's going to move things in the right direction. Otherwise, what's going to happen, Hilde, is you're going to keep you're going to stay on this hamster wheel that you're on right now, where you right. gain, lose weight, gain, lose weight, gain. By the way, every time you do that, it probably feels like it's harder uh, to to move in the right direction. So we're, we're going to move things in the right direction, but it's going to be through strength and muscle. So normally I, I've been doing the thing on Sunday that he created for me and I work out with him on Tuesday and Thursdays. So should those days now be switched to following your program? Yes. Yes. I mean, hopefully he's, if he's a fan of the show, he'll hopefully yes. be okay with following. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. So hopefully you can bring to him the next time you see him say, Hey, the guys wanted me to do maps anabolic. They said pre phase three days a week. Would you take me through these movements? And then there's tremendous value having him train. Watch like, your now, form. are you training with him in the gym or is he coming to your house? No, we actually do it virtually. So oh, he, he oh, watches uh, you while you, you work out. Got you. Okay. Got you. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Then, then it's but he does a full body. Um, we, you know, sometimes we, we focus a little more on upper body and core, but we do get the whole body in. Um, okay. Sure. So like Thursday's more legs today. We did more, um, upper body core. Yeah. But so, I'm, I'm going to guess it's a lot. It's a lot. It's more like circuit. And faster, yeah, yeah. So yeah. that, so that is going to be the. I, I can picture it right now too. Is like, so the most uh, awkward or difficult thing is that you guys should have these two to three minute <laughs> breaks on Zoom. You know, he's going to be. You're going to yeah. have done an exercise, and then you're going to sit there and not do shit for three minutes. Like just. Oh yeah. So be prepared he, for that. You know. <laughs> he talks to me while, like, he usually gives me um, a sixty second break. Sometimes ninety, depending on how long the circuit was. So we. We chat in between. I, I have a chance to get a hold of myself, but um, yeah. It's, so it's th three days a week of doing the strength work. You're yes, saying yes, yes, and yep. then okay. and then and then and then just 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 stay active and so maintain. You can maintain those days you run, but turn them into walks or hikes. Okay, and, and, you, and then you're you'll be set. And then hit the protein okay. targets, like I said, and prioritize that. And the calories are going to fall where they need to. Great. Okay. Thank you so much. No problem. We'll send you that program. And then, of course, you can give your trainer access because so he can look at it. So you can go ahead and share your password. We don't let anybody else do that. But <laughs> that's, okay. that's illegal. <laughs> I was just going to ask you, in terms of, um, I know the protein is the um, the emphasis, but carbs, is there anything I should focus more on versus, I, I know you said natural foods, but. That's it for now. So like fruit. No, nah, okay. that's it for okay. now. You could have rice. You could even have pot. If, if your body handles yeah. pasta, whatever you digest well. Yeah. yeah. Whatever, I, whatever. Just avoid heavily processed foods. So I don't, I wouldn't eat right. anything that comes out of a wrapper or a box just because those foods are right. engineered to make you overeat. And so, okay. you know, and, and this is the thing, Hildy, that, that is when you eat in the way that we're kind of talking or starting, your, your calories will end up where they need to. So you're not going to have to sit there and like count and focus and what's going on and here, whatever. When you throw heavily processed foods in, those foods are so carefully designed and engineered to make you overeat that your calories are going to fall much higher. It just doesn't mm -hmm. matter. It's just going to happen. So that's all you got to do. So afterwards, you're like, all right, what do I want for carbs? Oh, that's whole natural. Okay, well, it could be rice. could be oatmeal. could be fruit. Um, it could be anything in a whole natural I'll sense. give you my favorites. Mm -hmm. My favorites of my clients are sweet potatoes, yams, quinoa, rice, uh, all fruits Fruit. and and vegetables. That's the that's the go to okay. right there. Rotate through okay. all that and uh and again, like Sal said, hit your protein first, and then right. in, in, indulge in the other. And you'll see it'll probably naturally just kind of level your calories where you need to be. Okay. All right. Great. Thank you. You got it. Thanks all for right, calling Elite. in. Thanks a lot. Boy, that that when you hear someone like that, is that flashback? Like, oh, that's every client that I trained. Yeah. yeah. For years, you know, yeah. same struggle, same thing. 
Yeah. And been through a lot of those like programs, those weight loss kind of programs, and then having to kind of, you know, condition them that, look, we do have to rest. We got to build strength. And that's, you know, a long conversation that you always have to have. Plus our generation and her generation, right? She's, she's a little older. We were taught uh, that the way that you work out to get lean is you need to constantly be moving. You constantly need to be sweating and fat is bad and watch your calories and, oh, you want to lose weight, go run, or you're going to lift weights, make sure you don't rest. That's the way you burn body fat. So it gets really hard because she's going to switch to the style of training, do what we say, and she's like, I don't feel like I'm doing enough. It's going to take a yeah. minute. It's gonna. That's why I, I wanted to put emphasis on, like, you know it's going to be weird, right, sitting yeah. on a Zoom for mm-hmm. three minutes yep. <laughs> between. Like she says, sometimes he gives her a six. Sometimes she gets a 60-second rest. Well, wait till you have to sit there for three minutes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And that's after every single time you do a set. Like, that's going to be. It's a good point because, I mean, if you're a trainer and you're coaching somebody virtually like that and you want to show value, you know, you don't want to waste their time. And, and so – you know, I'm sure like that's sort of the intention, like good intentions. But for her, she really needs that rest to be able to switch into like a straight hundred percent, hundred percent. You're right on with yes. what that is. That is totally a trainer who probably knows what they're supposed to do and what's best. If that client was coming in, listen, you're training someone virtually. Yeah, it's awkward to sit there for two minutes. Can picture it. Well, because you know why you're literally sitting on the Zoom more than you are teaching or yes, coaching. Yes, yeah. <laughs> There's if, do the math. Yeah. A set's only going to take her. Maybe yeah, 30 seconds, 30 seconds top. Then she's going to rest for three minutes, like yeah. the two to three minutes. Like I, I mean, my advice to the trainers are really just come in with some educational material to then, you know, those breaks, like teach her something, teach right. her something, you know, nutritionally teach her something like, you know, in terms of exercise mechanics, something, yeah. you know, to bring. Yeah, I used to sell my clients uh, on why we're doing what we're doing. I thought, you say, I thought you were going to say, I used to sell my clients on why they need more training. <laughs> <laughs> while we're training. Yeah. Hey, all, right. You what. <laughs> all right, now that we're done with this, this also, is a, yeah, this comes program a, in this here one, comes this a commercial one, one. break. Yeah. Yeah, three minute commercial Here's the commercial up. break. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just constant commercials. Oh, man. Yeah. Our next caller is Rachel from California. Hi, Rachel. How can we help you? Hi. How are you guys? Hey, hey good. what's happening? Not much. First of all, I just want to thank you guys for everything that you do and for the, uh, you know, the real high quality content you guys put out. Um, I've been listening for a couple of years and it took me a while to jump onto the resistance training train. Um, I'm a former, I guess, cardioholic, if you would call it. Um, and I just, you know, cardio was my thing. I needed the endorphin rush. Um, anything that wouldn't get me that was off the charts. And so I've recently started doing resistance training and I've been enjoying it a lot. So thank you guys for that. Awesome. Awesome. Great. Yeah. Um, okay. I want to give you guys a little bit of uh, context before I ask my question, because I think giving you a little bit of background will be helpful in kind of where I'm coming from. Um, I, growing up, I never struggled with any type of disordered eating or um, addiction to exercise. I was raised in a very uh, untraditional childhood. Um, I was born into a very uh, ultra-religious Orthodox Jewish family. Um, And my dad is the head rabbi of a very large community in Southern California. Um, And so we were brought up in a typical Jewish home. I had a very Jewish mother. And, um, you know, the Jewish culture is if you love me, you'll feed me. And so we (laughs) would, (laughs) I'm one of eight. Um, and we would come home every night after school and there would be eight dinners waiting for us because we all like different foods. And so, you know, mom would kind of cook whatever we all wanted. Um, I went to a, an all Jew, an all Jewish girls school, essentially. So I grew up with very like-minded girls. Um, body image was never an issue. Um, we, I guess I hovered around 145, 150 since I stopped growing. Um, but it, it never really bothered me because we were so sheltered from social media. We were so sheltered from the world. We were, you know, we didn't watch movies. We didn't read English books. And so body image just didn't exist. Wow. Um, fast forward after high school, um, I was set up in an arranged marriage, which is uh, pretty common in the, author- in the Orthodox culture. Um, I met the man that I was supposed to marry, uh, when I was right at 18. And then a month later we were married. So, um, the night of my wedding, I got pregnant 
Um, and, you know, first year, I want to say, into my marriage, everything kind of just hit me. Uh, I realized how miserable I was in this world, in this marriage, in this religion. Um, everything I felt like I was doing, ultimately, I felt like I was doing for my parents, not for me. And I've got a kid and I'm married to someone I don't know. Uh, I feel nothing. I was just numb. So I took on a hobby and that was exercising. I started running. Um, I loved the feeling that running gave me. It was an escape for me. Um, I started HIIT training. Again, I loved that endorphin rush and exercise was essentially what I would do to escape my reality. Um, at the same time, I started restricting the food that I was eating. I gave up all animal protein. Then I started giving up eggs, um, giving up carbs. Uh, over time, I went from that 145 weight down to about 104. Um, I was very lean. Uh, I exercised from the beginning, started about an hour a day until it got to about five hours a day. And nothing less than that was acceptable to me. Um, it, it almost felt like I was punishing myself for the life that I was living uh, in an odd way. Um, but that went on for over 10 years. Um, I've got three kids. Uh, and about two years ago, I left the marriage and essentially left the religion too. Um, I started you know, adapting a very healthy way of eating and exercising. I've incorporated a lot of food back into my diet. I trimmed down the exercise from five hours, you know, to three hours to two hours it's gone over like the last two years. So I'm currently at one hour a day. Um, I do mind pump aesthetic for three days a week. Uh, the other days I do my cardio, I'll go for runs, um, do my steps, you know, whatever feels right that day. But I know that I've done a lot of damage to my immune system, to my gut, uh, to my body during those 10 years. So uh, I've tried to incorporate a lot more protein into my diet, a lot more food, but my stomach can't really handle it. Um, in the beginning, it just it, it, it was almost impossible to eat that much. Um, but I've gotten to a place now where I'm able to eat the amount of protein that I should be eating. Um, you know, not enough, but I'm working towards there. In regards to the exercise that I'm doing, um, you know, I told you it's the mind pump and then the cardio. The last couple of months, I want to say, it just feels like everything's breaking down. My body's breaking down. I don't have energy for those runs anymore. I, you know, my heart rate is just elevated more than it's ever been. Um, I just, I feel tired um, constantly. And so ultimately, my question is those, you know, 10, 12 years, I know that I've done a lot of damage to my body. I also know that it's tied to some type of, you know, trauma of my past. And I'm wondering now in my mind, you know, I've, I'm eating more. I've cut back to about an hour a day only. Um, but I, I can't seem to find that the place where I feel rested and ready and, you know, ultimately that the you know, the results of the work that I'm putting in, I'm not, I'm not really seeing it. So I guess my question is, is, you know, I'm, I'm worried to take a full time, you know, a full on break. I don't want to do that. Um, but given, you know, my past and the history and where I am now, I want to know your thoughts on if I'm not, you know, let's say I'm not eating enough to sustain the muscle growth that I would want or that I'm putting in the work for, um, or I'm just, you know, am I pushing my body into the ground? Where do you think I got, I should go from here? Rachel, are you, um, first, before I let Sal lecture you, are you <laughs> in, are you in a place uh, where you're ready to receive that because that's a, a, a guarantee all the guys I mean we probably could have answered yeah. your question about halfway through like, yeah um on w what you need to do right now and and the answers to why you're seeing what you're seeing right now the question really comes down to um, are you in a place right now where you're ready to receive that advice and and follow through on it or do you feel like uh you you're you're reaching out to us just to hopefully tell you that we, you can do more of something yeah, else. Something you might know in, in, intrinsically. 
So I know what you guys are going to tell me. I know what Sal's going to lecture me in, um, you know, <laughs> calories. I need to reverse diet myself. I mean, I can write the script myself. Yeah. Yeah. I, That's why I think, I'm asking. <laughs> I, 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 I took a week off of exercising because I thought that that would cure all my problems. And clearly it did not. Yeah. Um, I, I don't know, honestly, that I can commit to any longer than that of taking a break. I don't, I don't necessarily think he's going to tell you that you got to stop everything. Rachel, no. let me ask you a question. What hi, you, Sal. Hi, how are you? <laughs> how are you doing? Here it comes. Hey, look, uh, by the way, congratulations for being able to get where you're at now and talk about, um, you know, kind of everything that you went through and the way you did. Um, you've helped a lot of people, okay, right now just because you're on our show. So I appreciate it. It takes courage to do that. What, what are you worried about? What are you afraid of? If Because you said, I don't know if I can do less than an hour a day. What, what, what is the fear? Fear is my mind. The fear is what I'm going to tell myself all day. The fear is, you know, I've become the harshest critic of myself. And it's constant. It's constant noise in my head. Yeah. You need, you need to work out. You need it. Why aren't you working out? Why aren't you working out? And then it just goes on all day. And so ultimately, I'm just, I just want to shut it up. And so I work out. Yeah. Yeah, I know what that feels like. Are you um, are you working with uh, a therapist? Yeah. I've been working with a therapist. We've been going through you know all the past trauma and look, that's going to take years. Yeah. To right, um, I guess I wonder if if there's any way that my exercise or my eating is tied to more than just you know the body being tired and more to yes, than yes. Over. It's a, it's and by the way, it's not it's less of a punishment punishment thing it's more of a control thing yeah mm -hmm. it's total control it's so you're, you're it's control you've developed a relationship with exercise where you 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 abuse it um mm -hmm. like a drug um yeah. and and it sounds like you're getting you're running away from something mm -hmm. when you do it and so without that like you said your fear is like what am i going to tell myself what am i going to do in that hour how am i going to operate um yeah. so i understand that so okay first off um you have 15 years of trauma yeah. Okay. And, and, and that's, there's a lot there. I mean, you, you told us the tip of the tip of the iceberg, I'm sure. Right. So there's 15 years of trauma. A big part of it is you abusing yourself. Um, yeah. and then there's other stuff that goes along with that. Okay. A week off <laughs> isn't going to even come close yeah. to addressing that, uh, you know, three years off, isn't going to do that. Now I'm not going to tell you to take time off, but what right. I, what I am saying to you is what's driving the way you're feeling right now is, is it has to do with your, your mind. Some people would say the spirit, but it's the mind yeah. that's driving all of this. And the mind is probably uh, impacted your gut in the way that it has. Now you got bad gut health. I would yeah. work with a functional medicine practitioner for gut health. So you got to do that. Um, and as far as exercise is concerned, I, I, I know what program I would recommend to you, but you're going to probably want to do something every single day. Mm. Is there something you can do in replace of the workout for that hour? Is there anything you can do that, like, would you be open to doing a yin yoga class on those days that you're, uh, you know, uh, on the days where you're not going to be lifting? It's so boring. I know. <laughs> I know. Do you do you play music? Do you have any other hobbies? A hobby that you like? You have I do have hobbies, but my hobbies are boxing, oh, running. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, 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 no. You don't get any of those ones. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Look, here, here's what I want. Nothing, there's no knitting, I, no knitting, like, knitting or <laughs> reading books or anything. No, I'm not gonna knit. Look, I. I'm sitting Crucial. still. I don't, I, anything that's, you know, honestly, I don't really love hiking because it's very slow paced. Oh, yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah. If hiking is slow paced. There's no way in hell I'm going to do a yin yoga class. I just, I can't. All right. All right. Look, I'm going to, I'm going to look, I'm going to sell you differently. Okay. Mm. E either right. do, either do what I'm about to tell you, or you're going to be forced. And I don't mean Ooh. I'm going to come force you. It, you're going to start to run into some problems. I'm already running into those problems. Okay. I don't it, they're only, or, they're only going to get worse. They're going to get a lot worse. Things are going to get a lot louder. Your, your, the signs are going to get a lot louder. You're going to suffer more. Your children are going to suffer as a result. Maybe that'll motivate you. So the only way, the only way to get to the other end is to go through. Okay. You can't go around and you can't mm -hmm. avoid it. You got to go through. So what does that mean? What am I talking about? What the advice I'm going to give you is going to suck really bad for probably a year. It's just going to suck. You, a lot of shit's going to come up. 
You're going to be like, oh God, I got to do it this way. I really want to do it the way I did it before. Uh, you're going to start to feel better. That's really going to want you to go back. It's going to push you to go back to what you were doing before, especially as you start to feel better. So here's what I'm going to recommend. MAPS Aesthetic is the wrong program for you. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to have you do MAPS Anabolic. I want you to follow MAPS Anabolic, the two-day-a-week version, not the three-day-a-week version. Jesus, bro. The two-day-a-week. This I'm giving you the perfect device, okay? <laughs> this, like, like, this is what I want you to do, okay? I, I wish I could train you because I would just coach you the whole time. But MAPS Anabolic, two-day-a-week version. On the other days, I want you to find a restorative something yin yoga is a good example can we okay. give her can we give her uh maps performance to go with it and have her do the mobility sessions i think the flow work and stuff in there would give mm -hmm. her something that makes her as feel long like as you don't turn the mobility sessions into into circuit training well no that's kind of hard to do that well i mean you could do it fast as hell well, make, make <laughs> yeah, ass sweat. Yeah. i mean i could th that will keep her mind busy it's challenging enough to where she has an, like a goal she can set and yeah. work on it's uh, it's the intensity is low enough it'll be recuperative and it'll keep her do you do you have the um is it feasible for you to hire a, a yoga instructor so you could do one-on-one -on -one? Uh, yeah that's feasible you know okay. i i mean i just as feasible for me to do it alone, right? Or go to a yoga class and do it. I just, I never I'm, kept a style of exercise. Yeah, no, I'm not talking about feasible in terms of, can you like, like in terms of the cost, because it's, it's more expensive, right? To do a one-on-one -on -one instructor. Here's why I think a yoga instructor would be better. You're going to be more accountable. They're going to be able to coach you through the process. And a really good yoga instructor really knows how to work with the mind. Yeah. They really know how to calm the a mind. A lot of breathing techniques. Yeah, and too. you're going to need that. A lot of shit's going to come out. Like, okay, don't be surprised if you cry often in yin yoga with a good instructor. And if that happens, you're, it's supposed to happen, okay? I would do yin yoga. I would do MAPS anabolic two days a week. And then I'd work with a functional medicine practitioner for diet because you got some gut stuff that needs to get addressed, okay? Now, th what I'm saying isn't going to be easy. A lot of stuff's going to come up. It's going to be challenging. But I promise you on the other end of this, you're going to be like, wow, this is so different. This is so different. A lot better. So I, I'm going to add some stuff to this just because if I if I had you as my client, I would 100% agree with Sal because I'd be in control of it every day. My fear is taking you from everything you're doing down to two days a week and yin yoga, which you already professed you are not a fan of. Uh, my fear is that you're not going to stick to it longer than a week or two. So I would want to peel you down slowly. Mm. I would want to take you to anabolic three days a week with mobility days on the other day. So you're you're still got this kind of feeling of you're doing active, but I know you're you're dramatically reducing the intensity. And then my my goal would be to get you to where Sal wants you because right now I think you're you're so far on the right of extreme with the at the exercise that the the rip off the band aid thing you want her to do right now, uh, without having well, somebody she's, holding her hand all he, the way through it. Here's again. the thing: Rachel's saying right now that the signs are already showing up. Yeah. She hasn't mm -hmm. told us what they are, but based off of the energy I'm getting from what she's saying, it sounds like we're in a bit of a dire situation. Am I am I am I resonating? Yes, yes, you are resonating as far as the signs. However, you know, the week that I took off of exercising, I was a mess. You know, yeah. I, I was, I was angry. I was moody. I couldn't be a mom. I couldn't work. I've got, you know, I have three kids mm -hmm. and that one week I, I felt bad for my kids. It was, yeah. it, you know, mm -hmm. like they were suffering with me because I couldn't be present for them because of my own shit that I had going on. And that's why I don't know that I can do a year. Well, I, I don't. Rachel, that how, I, how, how familiar are you with what withdrawal looks like from from substances. Not that familiar. Have you ever known a friend who had to stop doing something like opiates or alcohol or cigarettes even? Okay. The withdrawal symptoms are really bad at first. They don't last a year, not even close. So yeah, it's going to suck at first. That's what you're experiencing is withdrawal. And what's coming up is all the stuff that you're burying and distracting yourself from. But here's the problem, okay? This is the myth. The myth is that you're actually keep me, keeping it at bay and solving it. No, because what's happening is it's still under the surface and it's yeah. coming out without your permission, okay? It's coming out in other ways. 
It's 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 still acting be- below the surface. It's actually more insidious because it's more subconscious. When you when you go through withdrawal, it's more of a conscious awareness. Like, oh fuck, I feel like this. Ah, oh, I'm acting shitty. I'm irritable. When you bury it, stuff it, and distract, it's still pulling the strings. It's just in a way that you're not aware of, and you're still doing stuff that's not great. So, and, and withdrawal does not last forever at all. It's going to suck at first really bad. Then it gets easier and it gets easier and it gets easier. So how long, I, sorry, how long do you think it would last for? I think if you, if you followed what we said, if you let your therapist know what you're doing and you did the yin yoga and you found a good instructor, I think you would have a very, I think it would feel very cathartic by the second or third week, definitely by the second month. Are you not on uh, Rachel? Are you on social media at all? Are you on Instagram, Facebook? Are you on any of that stuff? Yeah. Uh, you, we're, I'm going to put you in our forum too. So I, I mean, I, w- I would like to to stay in touch with you as you go through this. Um, just it, it's so hard to be able to sit here and try and tell you like, uh, oh, you, this long, yeah. and then you're going to feel great. Like it's you know, it, it may not even take a year, uh, but it may take longer. It's like. But for sure, what is not going to help is going back and then continuing to punish your body. Um, I don't know where I'm at with like, if I think that going all the way to what Sal is saying is the path or it is to slowly uh, taper you down or not. But no matter what, you've got to head in that direction. You've got to start taking steps in the direction of taking care of your body Mm -hmm. instead of punishing it through exercise because it's, it's revolting already. And it's going to revolt anymore. That doesn't mean you need to stop at all. It just means we need to choose things that are less punishing and taxing on the body and more things that are are going to feed you, feed your soul, feed your body, take care of your body. And so we need to find that right balance. And you're you're really far on one side right now. And I got to bring you back to the other side. Yeah. And I mean, listening to all this advice and it's, it's a really tough one to prescribe, but I'd I really do feel like if a personal coach, you know, somebody that can kind of be constantly there to, to communicate with you in terms of like that intensity factor, because you're going to be driven to want to do everything intensively and to, to sort of let it out. Um, and to, to be able to, to work your way through and find, um, you know, a different approach and a different way to do it where it's restorative. Uh, so I, I understand where Sal's going with the yin yoga and I understand how difficult that's going to be for you mentally, uh, to shift into that kind of a mindset. And I think that, you know, uh, and it, either one of us would, would, you know, love to personally, you know, kind of guide you through that whole process. And I think that there's somebody out there like that. And well, I think, you know, you what? know, within our forum, we know some, we know somebody where, I'm in, gonna Cal- talk to- where in California. Are you um, in the Canal Valley, Agora Hills? Yeah. Well, no, I know we know somebody virtually. I, I don't want to say over uh, on just in case that their schedule's too full. Rachel, I'm going to save your contact info. And uh, I'll have somebody contact you that's a really good online coach that we know personally that could kind of help you along the way. Yeah. I, yeah, I, I appreciate all of that. Um, I think my response to all of that simply is, you know, my workouts have really just been my saving grace, my, you know, the last 15 years of my life. And they're the one thing that just may be able to just go on every day yeah mm-hmm. and i that's why i don't, don't that's why i don't want to take it away from you i just want to change it a little yeah we're just looking that's why i just it. want to change it a change little i don't want to take it. your workouts away i want you to do it every day you're mm-hmm. just three days a week it's lifting weights and strength training and then the other four days it's mobility, mobility we want it to yoga. build you up not to punish you yeah that's that's where we want to get yeah, this, so, this, I, I get, look, I get where you're, where you're coming from. I, I, I can definitely go in and out of a relationship with exercise that way. So I know what it feels like. Um, I get it. Um, it's definitely doing something, but it's, it's, it's not working anymore. It's doing, it's doing the opposite now of what you want it to do. So, that's, yeah, that's the part. It's like, I, I want to do it and I want to feel good and I want to have that relationship with it, but it's just fighting me. I, I, Rachel, I also yeah. want you to know that you are not an anomaly. This is not not something that I have not personally dealt with with clients before. You'll get through this. You're mm-hmm. going to make it through this. You will, okay? I've it's, been it's, excommunicated from my family, my community. You know, it's, it's very much an alone feeling. And um, You're not alone. Because- we ha- we're with you, okay? We're with you. 
I'm going to put you in the forum. I want you to, if you communicate with me, I'm going to communicate with you. Okay. Mm -hmm. So you're not alone. You will get through this. Okay. Really, really what it is right now, what we're all spinning our wheels around is like where to start you and how we do, how do we guide you virtually right now? If I had you, I'd take you. I got you. Right. There's, there's no way I, I would, you would not get through this if I didn't have you right by my one, side. One, one step at a time. You're gonna, right now. You're gonna, you're gonna heal yourself. It's mm -hmm. one step at a time. Okay. It's not, it sounds like there's a lot of things there you want to work on, but in order to tackle all those other things, we need to, you need to be healthy mm -hmm. and happy, Rachel. So let's heal you first. Okay. Yep. Look how far you've come by yourself. You've, you've got this. You will. Okay. We're okay. gonna say I'm gonna have I'm gonna have somebody contact you. Okay, we got your I think we got your email, so I'll have somebody contact you, and hopefully it works out because uh, they're they're really good online coaches and they can help you with this process. We'll be in touch today. Okay. You guys, I really appreciate it. All right, All right Rachel. Rachel. Thanks, Rachel. Thank Take you. Care. You got it. Oh, that's hard. Yeah. 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 That's really oh, tough. Fuck. I mean, look, man. I wish she was close. She was yeah, close. I'd take her right now. Yeah. That's that's rough. That's a. Uh, um, She's developed this, you know, it's like, it's like an abusive relationship with exercise. It's like you're with this person and you're afraid to leave them, mm -hmm. but you have to because they're abusive. Well, it's, it, this is also a major control thing. When you, when you grow up in a, a very feels re like no re religious family where you've done everything, them, that everyone's been telling you what you need to do you your whole do life. What, you don't do what you this want. This is the one thing you have it's had. one outlet. It's your had, one thing yeah. you've had yeah. full control of. Nobody's yeah. telling you how to eat. Nobody is telling you how to exercise. You have decided that. And so more of it, harder of it, you get to do that. And so it's letting go of some of that control. Um, that's why, I, that's why I thought you were too far, bro, to two days a week with, I mean. We are, we literally get minutes. I know, I know. There. And I know, yeah. I know your desire. I mean, that's my goal is and to it's get also, there. Yeah, it's just to tell her the answer, which you would never do in coaching. If I'm working with someone, I'm not going to just give you the, I'm like, we're going to work on this step by step. Yeah. And there's also other people. There's a lot of the reveal as we're doing the work, right? right? Listen, Rachel, we, we hung up, yes. we hung up with you and we were not satisfied with, uh, the, the help that we, 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 I mean, we tried helping you, but we thought we wanted to give you more. So here's what we did. Okay. We contacted our friend, Christina. She's an okay. excellent coach. Excellent. She's a licensed therapist, but she's also works with people with nutrition and exercise. And what we did is we hired her for you for the next three months. So she's gonna walk oh you. God. She's gonna walk you through this process, okay? Because really? well, yeah. yes, I promise. Yeah. So she's exceptional. She's really, really good. We want to help you out, and uh, that was the person that I was kind of alluding to when we were talking to you. Adam got her on the phone, and um, and she, she's she'd love to work with you. She's a yeah. friend of ours, yeah. and we will be in contact Confirmed. with her also. So by extension, we're gonna be working with you. Yeah, I really appreciate that, you guys. You got that's, it. Uh, that's that's honestly something that I've never. You know, no, I've spoken to a therapist about my past, but never really about this issue and combining the two, you know, so I, I, hopefully it'll it'll work. And just having someone to talk to, honestly, that, I think is going to be the best motivator. That's why she's yeah. going to be perfect, because yeah. that's what that's what we were thinking is like she specializes yeah. in exactly that. And that's what you need right now is somebody to be able to talk to and communicate all these things and then also be able to help you through the yeah, exercise and you. nutrition portion, because that's equally as yeah. important. So. Uh, I'm going to, I, do you want to, you want to give her her number or you want to have her call? What's no, I'll have Christina call you. Uh, you, her, she's mind of, what is it? Mind of matter. Mindset of matter. Mindset of matter on Instagram and mindset of matter.com is her website. She's phenomenal. She's going to contact you. We've already talked to her and, uh, now you have somebody there that's going to walk you through the process. So, and we want to see you succeed really bad. So, do. yep. Okay. I, I did that. You guys really, thank you. Okay. That's you got it. We're going to give her your number right now. So be on the lookout. Her name's Christine. Okay. Mindset of matter coaching. Mindset yeah. of matter coaching. That's it. Okay. And it's Christina. To Doug. I don't know if Doug has my number. I do have your number. I called you earlier. Oh, that's right. You did. Okay. Yeah. Sorry. Yes. <laughs> no problem. So yeah, we're going to have her, we're going to have her call you. And then uh, she's going to, whatever you, we told her, whatever you need, as far as the, uh, the coaching on her end for the next three months, mind pump, take care of it. Okay. Wow. Thank you. Thank you guys. That's, that's awesome. All that right, Rachel, really cool. we'll, you got it. we'll be in touch. Thank you. Okay. All right. You have a Bye. good day. Take care of yourself. Our next caller is Sarah from Massachusetts. Hi, Sarah. How can we help you? Hi. Hi. So, um, let me see. I am 40. I've been working out for about four or five years, but really focusing on strength training a little over two years. That's when I started listening to you guys. Um, 
I've really fallen in love with the process. Um, I have gone from, God, in 2017, I was about 210 pounds, a women's size 18. Um, I'm now about 140, 142, um, size four. Um, really have been trying to focus uh, listening to you guys. I've, I built my own kind of routine. Um, I, I, I really focus on progressive overload, focusing on strength. Um, at first the scale went up a little, uh, scared, scared me. Um, but I, I've been super consistent. I packed on a ton of muscle. I think I'm in the, I had a DEXA scan done 85 to 90 percentile for my age. Uh, That being said, the last three or four months, I'm noticing no real strength gains, no aesthetic gains. Um, I'm at about 30% body weight. Um, I used to eat very low calorie with your advice, um, reverse diet. I eat usually about 2000, 2200 calories a day. Um, I'm, I'm only five, five, one. Um, so I'm really just, I am kind of stuck. I, I don't know how to make more progress again. I'm, I'm 40. I'm feeling like, I don't know if it's my age or what. Uh, you look awesome, by the way. I mean, I'm yeah. looking up at yeah, your great page. I've got your stuff up right now. Yeah, you're doing great. Um, okay, so it's only been a couple months that you're not noticing any changes? Three or four months. And it's not that I haven't been, I, I haven't changed anything as far as I'm concerned. You know, again, listening to you guys, sleep is a priority. I get a ton of sleep. I I take my supplements. I, I do, nothing's changed for me. What's the pro- What kind of program are you following? Are you following one of our programs? No. So I, I'm a little stuck on, you know, do I do aesthetic? Do I do anabolic? I don't know where to start being that I'm not, I'm still a fairly new lifter, um, but I don't want to go backwards either. So what does your routine look like now? How many days a week are you in the gym working out with weights? You're going to yell at me. I, I know I overtrain. Um, <laughs> six, six days a week. Uh, I try to do, and I know you guys are big on full body. I just can't get into it. Um, so I do three upper, three lower. Um, you know, if I'm feeling kind of shitty one day, I, I I think mentally I just like to be in the gym. So if there's a day where I didn't get a great sleep, I'll go to the gym and just walk or uh, row or do something. But I mean, lifting, I lift Always five days a week, I th- usually. I think you're doing all right. Yeah, I think you're doing it. That's, and, not, and that's not a bad. Your energy is okay yeah. and you yeah. feel good. You got good sleep. You've, your libido's healthy. Everything else is good. Yeah. All right. Maps Aesthetic. You're, you'll be in the gym five days a week with Maps Aesthetic. Now, okay. it is full body based. Uh, so there's three full body workouts, but then there's two focus sessions. But you'll be in the gym five days a week lifting weights. And it's well programmed. Obviously, we created it. It's a high volume workout, but you sound like you could probably do it. And I wouldn't change anything else. I think just changing the workout alone is going to do it for you. Okay. Yeah. I've tried like changing up the tempo, listening to you guys as far as what else can I do? And I don't want to get bored. I go, when I lift, it's, it's all out. You know, I couldn't even squat my body weight. Now I can squat like 210. So like, I think where I'm not packing weight on the bar, I'm not, you know, making the progress that I was making when I started lifting gets frustrating for me. Yeah. Yeah. I also, that's another point to be made is I think you've made tremendous. Yeah. You're not going to make progress. Yeah. All it's, the time, it, like. Unfortunately, the the longer we do this, the better we get, the, the, the less we see as far as the progress, you know, like what you came from, you were probably seeing week over week change yeah. with your physique yeah. and stuff. And yeah. so, yeah, and you look really good right now. So you're going to see very incremental change going forward. So you do need to be adjusted for that i think you're doing a great job and i think maps aesthetic is okay for yeah you. and just getting a new stimulus is at least going to spark that uh, new kind of energy going into it so i think that'll be helpful if anything you know and your body will respond do you track uh did you track steps i don't know if i heard you say that or not did you did you say how, m- how many steps a day you're doing i mean i wear a watch i'm usually between 10 to fifteen thousand a day okay yeah you're on fire yeah, yeah, yeah maps yeah. aesthetic that's all easy follow that program follow as it's laid out Listen to the and keep my calories the same because yep. I, w- I want to cut body fat, but I don't want to let the program oh. do it. I let think the program will yep. do it for you. Yep. I'm going to, I'm going to give you one more follow-up. So after you run aesthetic, I would look into map strong. I think you would love it. And I think there's, oh, yeah. a, there's enough unconventional exercises in there that you'll oh, yeah. also get great change from that. Yep. 
So st do maps aesthetic, like Sal said, and then uh, I would tell you to look into strong after that. I think that would be a great follow-up program for you. Awesome. Thank you guys so much. Thank you for everything. I feel like I know all of you. I know your <laughs> wives. I know like I'm a little starstruck. So thank you so much. Yeah. Thank, thank, thank you. For calling thank you, Sarah. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. You got it. Rec we almost never recommend Maps Aesthetic because of the volume. I know. Yeah. But she had everything dialed in. She's been doing this for a while. She's Eat, kicking ass. Eating good amount of calories. Sleeping good. Proteins high, sleep, or libido. Just the switch from what she's doing to that, she's yeah. going to see some change for sure. I, I really think she's just, um, I mean, this is what happens after you've made, uh, I mean, look at her transformation. Yeah. Her, her I know. before I know. and after is insane. Like she is completely changed her body composition and so now it's incremental yeah, results you know? start kind of tapering off so yeah. now you gotta just change it up i mean her before and after is crazy yeah that's remarkable yeah our next caller is david from georgia david what's happening man how can we help you hey how's it going guys good, good. What's going on? awesome that you took my call i really really appreciate it you got sure, it man um i'm sure you want to get to lunch i'll just jump right in um with a little a little background so I'm um, 48 years old, 190 pounds, uh, about 14 and a half percent body fat. Um, I've been really active in endurance sports. I mean, since high school, mostly mountain bike racing. Um, I switched to weight training in 2021 and doing, it's basically I've been through anabolic a couple times, um, symmetry. And right now I'm about halfway through power lift. Um, I'm still, I'm still not happy with my physique though. I have a lot of, I still have belly fat, you know, the love handles going, but when I have a pump, I'm like, I feel like I'm really, that's where I really want to be. Hmm. Um, so my question is what can I take from that? Um, and what, what should I continue to, to focus on? All right. Well, first off, if you look the ideal way you want to look when you have a pump, that means you're already pretty close. Mm -hmm. Like right. you can't take somebody and radically transform them with the pump to the point where they're... So in other words, you're pretty close uh, without that pump uh, because a pump awesome. isn't going to add... It's not going to add, you know, a ton. Um, I, go ahead. I, I see something right away that'll help not what to you cut see? you off. Is that... I mean, it, it, you're currently in a cut on power lift? Well... I was. I'm on vacation now, but I was on a cut. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> okay. I mean, have you done like it? When, when was the last time you did like a clean bulk, like with the intent to like add good calories and strength yeah. train and build versus probably trying to lean out? It's it's been a while, yeah. just because I've always I'm always focused on the the love handles yeah, and that yeah. oh. that belly. So that's hit the, you oh, hit yeah. the nail on the head, Adam. Yeah. yeah. So that's what, muscle. So that's what you you just need to go through. Uh, you need to go through like so a, like a lean bulk. Yeah, a lean bulk. So not like a vacation. Get to eat what you want. That's I'm on a bulk for the week. Like a okay, I'm strategically going to bulk through Maps Power Lift and slowly increase my calories. The goal is I'm not going to worry about the love handles at this moment. I'm going to get strong as fuck build some more muscle, and then I'm going to come back down after the program. David, if you do this right, you'll actually get leaner. You, Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if you do this right, you'll no, get leaner. Not on the scale, but in terms of body mm -hmm. composition. So if you do this right, yeah. you'll probably fuel, I don't know, I'm going to say five to eight pounds of lean body mass, which would be phenomenal. Your body fat, the total amount of body fat on your body won't change. So you'll have the same pounds of body fat but the percentage will go down because now it's a smaller percentage of your overall body mass because you're now, let's say, eight pounds heavier with lean body mass. And it'll look better on your You're going to look a lot better, right? Yeah. So, And then from there, if you want to cut, now your metabolism is faster and it's going to be a lot easier. That's right. So, And the fact that you haven't done a lean bulk, like a really strategic one, in a long time, I mean, that alone, I mean, that tells me everything. Yeah, and the f I, I'm looking at 1,900 calories for 190 pounds. That's very low. It's pretty low. So, you, I mean, I, I would like to to reverse diet you and get you to a place where you're above 26, 2,800 calories and then cut you back down to, say, like 24. Like a 2,400 calorie should be a cut for you. And so that would be kind of the goal. Like when we, if I was training you, we'd be going through MAPS power lift. I'd be really pushing the weight, trying to get strong, trying to increase your calories. And the goal literally would be week over week. Can we get stronger? Can we add calories? Can we get stronger? Can we add calories? And at the end of the program, what would be a very successful, you know, cycle for us would mm -hmm. be, did I get you up north of 26 to 2,800 calories? And did we not put on a bunch of body fat on, in the pursuit of that? And did we get stronger? If we did that, I just shit, I set you up to get shredded over the next six to eight weeks. Like then you're in, then you're in prime situation 
to lean out, drop the calories, follow whatever program you want to follow after that. And you'll start to see those love handles drop down and you look great. Somehow I knew you were going to say something <laughs> like this, but I yeah. guess I just had to, I had to hear you all say it. Yeah. 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 No. Yeah. Yeah. But you're, by the way, though, like Sal said, hey, you're, you're right. You're right there. I mean, when you can say, I like the way I look, I just want to look the way, which I could totally relate to saying that, right? Like seeing myself all aired up in the gym, like, damn, I just want to look like that walking around. That mm -hmm. means you're not far away, yeah. man. Mm -hmm. You're right. It's, it's around the corner for you. So it's right there. Awesome. Yep. Well, thank you so much. You got it, man. By the way, you know, hundred. how tall are you? Uh, six one. Six one, one ninety, fourteen percent body yeah, fat probably, at yeah, forty eight years old. I think yeah. you're doing pretty good, bro. Yeah. yeah. You might be a little <laughs> harsh a lean on yourself. machine. And, yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah. You're doing good. <laughs> oh, thank you. You got it. All right, Dave. All right, man. All right. Yeah, uh, yeah, bro, you hit the nail right on the head. Yeah, yeah right yeah, away. Yeah, yeah. Well, I saw I, the ad there. I know I, I didn't want to interrupt you, but I saw like when I Doug scrolled the screen down, and then I go, "Oh shit, okay, this dude is trying to get rid of the." He's I been, been he's cutting been, forever. Been cutting, yeah, yep. he's been cutting for a while, and he's. I mean, but like you said too, six one one ninety fourteen. I mean, he's at forty eight. I think he's in better shape than I am right now. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's doing. He's doing good. Like Two thirty, so. dude. I'm six. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. yeah. Yeah, well, you're you're um, you're a beef. I'm just on beef. You're <laughs> a, lot, a lot of beef. You're a wild husky. Bison. Husky. Husky. husky, husky beef. When you were a kid, right? Square husky close. beef. <laughs> Look, if you like Mind Pump, if you want your fitness questions answered, but you know, go on Google and the fitness industry is full of crap. Go to askmindpump.com. We have an AI model that will answer your question in our voice based on our episodes, so you know it's accurate. Askmindpump.com. Go check it out. 